Put, hit that bad boy. Let's go. <laughs> no, put it on the mic. Okay. <laughs> warble. You need some warble. <laughs> it's the same as the other one. That's it. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Oh, you know what I didn't like was Shangri La. I hated Shangri La, where you had like that shrink gun and all the monkeys tried to kill you, like the zombie <laughs> monkeys. <laughs> didn't care for that. There's no reason to to malign monkeys like that. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about Taylor's <laughs> monkey affection. The monkeys are cool, man. I want you to get a monkey so bad. Like, like, why don't you make a stream goal that you get a capuchin monkey? Oh, no, dude, just, that would that would seriously fuck my life up. No, no, no. If you hit twenty five hundred subs, you rent a chimpanzee for one of your streams. No, I'm at twenty four seventy. I'm loving this idea. <laughs> Hang on, I'm, let's see, chimp rental, St. Louis. Oh no! Maybe I can get the the dying Kimmy and Kirby I got for my second birthday. Those two motherfuckers are definitely dead. Landmark, I uh, when I was two, I was or two or three. My birthday, I, I was obsessed with monkeys, <laughs> and my parents hired this company to come out with two little chimpanzees. Looking back on it, tremendously dangerous to let those yeah. things run around around those kind of kids. And I got <laughs> a uh, I got a, a Kawasaki, a little four wheeler that like a little kid would sit on a little electric thing and ride around. Yeah. And I remember Kirby was cool as shit. The male one, he was hanging out with me. We were palling around. Loved Kirby. Nothing, not a bad word to say about that. Now, definitely dead monkey. Uh, Kimmy was an absolute bitch. She pushed me off of my Kawasaki. I was as I was riding it for the first time, and then jumped on and drove it away. And I was distraught. And so. Big ups to Kirby for my third birthday party. Fuck you, Kimmy. I'm glad you're dead. <laughs> I love that you had multiple monkeys for your birthday party at third grade or three years old. We third grade. Three. I was three. <sighs> it's almost it's wasted on my, a three year old. One of my first memories is being pushed off of a Kawasaki by a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> like one of the first memories that I have like really ingrained in my head is looking to my right and seeing a, an ape come towards me and push me off my Kawasaki and, and commandeer. <laughs> which uh, <laughs> hold that. it was scary at the time. Fuck, it's hard to find monkey rental. I so the first hit I got was the top ten monkey rentals in St. Louis. I'm like, oh my god, this place is a a, a gold mine of monkey yeah, rentals. Uh, but then the it's link a didn't go anywhere. Troll from apes. <laughs> <laughs> However, I can get you a donkey, a tarantula, a snake, or a parrot, or more birds. It's hard to find monkeys. I searched Chimp Party St. Louis, and I did not get what I was looking for. Oh. <laughs> Jeez, I, I, bet, I bet there were zero regulations on this shit in 1993. <laughs> 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 Doing whatever you wanted. <sighs> you might have to live stream from the zoo. Would you let a donkey come into the room with me. Because <laughs> <laughs> what, what if we put a big diaper on the donkey? I'm not putting a diaper on a donkey. Just, It'll kick me. They'll, they, look, they're going to diaper the donkey for you. Don't worry about that. But just oh, imagine look, if, if you diaper donkey, then I don't think there's a problem. <laughs> imagine if like every time someone subscribes, you sort of like jerk its halter and it goes. <laughs> like, does that, that, that donkey bray. Like, oh, dude, I'd love that. I'd tune right. in if there was a donkey on your stream. I understand your resistance to the donkey, to. but you can get a white buffalo. None of these are monkeys. What, <laughs> oh, I, oh, wait, wait, wait. I actually We're do have doing an, our best here. <laughs> Taylor, I think I might have a winner here. You can get a ring-tailed lemur. <gasps> oh. See, but the lemurs are the idiots of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're being a bit monkeyist. I'm being a bit monkist. Uh, I mean, Dude, you're uh, gonna get uh, landmark banned with your extreme uh, monkism. No, I'm a, I'm an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, yeah, but like lemurs, well known, stupid, stupid monkeys. He'll, you he know, just a won't stop until he's very off the air. Bright monkey. Chimpanzee rental? <laughs> <laughs> like, can you rent a chimpanzee? Top <sighs> animal entertainers for hire in St. Louis. Are there any good ones? I'm going to click birthday for a child. <laughs> <laughs> In the age 30. <laughs> how, many, how many guests are you expecting at the, at the event? One. 1,500. <laughs> 1, <laughs> yeah, 1,500 people. No, they're all coming digitally. It'll just be me. Do you know the address? Yes. 
<laughs> well, I'm not going to give it to you. Come on, give me to the chimps. Dude, just send the chimp to Woody's house and he'll ship it to me. That's the <laughs> way to go. Burn in the fire. Oh, this, <laughs> this place has a sloth. This place has a sloth. Mm. We're getting close. Is a sloth related to a um, koala bear? Am, am I right about that? I, I think I koalas are marsupials. Ah, oh, it's uh, the kangaroo that's related to the sloth. No, it's no, the kangaroo no, that's no, related no. to the koala. Oh, I, I, no, I said it back. No, the koala is not a And not the opossum. Is the koala a marsupial? Yes. I think it might be. Really? Yes. Man, the, <laughs> the things you learn online. I didn't know what I was doing at the time. It was more of just like a... It was just a very mellow old horse, I'm pretty sure, uh-huh. where it was like, even if this buck, you know, thing freaks out, it's not going to be too horrible on him. I was only like maybe 10 when that happened. But yeah, I don't know. Just I wasn't enthused. And it was coming off. My adrenaline was already so high because I just won the sheep riding contest uh, at the rodeo. Wait, you won the, a sheep riding contest as a kid? Yeah. This is yeah, a lifetime I the, accomplishment. Uh, I, I won it. Uh, well, I mean, like the adults were riding bulls. But and you're so, an award-winning sheep rider. I won five dollars. Yeah, I won. Uh, I, me, and a bunch of all the other kids were were at a. Uh, I don't. I don't remember. It might have been like the Cape Girardeau Fair or something in Southern Missouri, where uh-huh. uh, Cape Girardeau, where Gone Girl is filmed, like around that area. And I, like my grandparents, entered me in in the uh, the sheep riding contest. And I was like, this is going to be a fucking blast because at that How age, old like were you at nine, this point? between eight and 10, I got to say, like, maybe, honestly, the more I'm thinking at about that age, like I'm, I'm picturing no. you there, like you're 11, fully bearded. <laughs> no, no I wasn't 11. One, I was like, but somewhere between eight and 10. But at that age, I was still I was bigger than most kids, just uh-huh. kind of taller. And. I was like, I'm going to, and, and it was like the age bracket was like fucking like six to 11 or something. So it was like on the higher end of that at like not eight, nine or 10 or something. And, and I got on there and I would watch the kid before me cause they didn't use the same sheep every time because that the sheep would get exhausted. Obviously it's just a fucking sheep. And so the guy before me took his sheep and it just went like, you know, all you're supposed to do is latch on, you know, uh-huh. like you're a tick, like dig your hands into that thick wool and latch on. And then they let the sheep go and that you go, ah, that that i didn't know that's what they sounded like if, if you haven't heard a sheep up close you probably think they say bah no they go ah, ah. <laughs> like like they're like they're about to vomit like they're all hung over about to vomit that's what they sound like and this this sheep was so lackadaisical it just kind of trotted around making a lot of noise and i was like oh in the bag eventually the kid just kind of like toppled off i got a sheep and i could hear my sheep coming <laughs> because I'm pretty sure they're like, all right, this kid's bigger than most of the other kids. Let's give him, you know, uh, uh, old softy over there. They ironically <laughs> named who knows. And this thing came out and like I, she, I didn't know that sheep's bucked, but I got on there and this thing started freaking the fuck out. It was not it did not consent to being a member of the sheep riding competition. <laughs> and I, I wrote it for as long as I could. And eventually it kind of became clear that like my weight was really doing a number on the the exhaustion of the sheep until eventually it was like, you know, one of the radio rodeo clowns had to come over like at the end of a roller coaster <laughs> almost when like the sheep had given it all and I was still latched on. He's like, all right, buddy, you're you're good. And then they uh they called me up at the end with the uh the second place person and they're like, Taylor, you win a blue ribbon for riding the sheep the longest and five dollars. And I got five dollars. I had my new cowboy digs on. I looked great. <laughs> and then I was riding that high. And then I went back out and uh some uh I'll be a cute like 11 year old girl or something was like uh you want to ride my horse with me and i was like yeah i want to ride your horse with you like and so i hopped up there and then uh and that's all that we did she just trotted the horse around and then i got around and i'm like all right all right you, I'm gonna spend my with the you know I, I gotta ask like how yeah, did well, you it's... not how did the taylor trajectory not end in rodeo yeah right like like it seems like you had this formative <laughs> time prod- at, at like prodigy. 11 where, where you're the hero of the crowd and you get the girl and ride away into the sunset on a goddamn horse. And yet you are not standing there today wearing a goddamn cowboy hat yeah. and spurs. I, bet my, I, my I expect you to guaranteed. be like George Strait. Like, Amarillo by morning. <laughs> like, you should be singing in fucking bars. <laughs> like, what's going on here? My, my grandpa definitely, like, if I would have taken that, he would have been the only person in my life if I said, when I grow up, I want to be a professional bull rider. He would be the one who's like, 
Taylor, don't you listen to any of those people in St. Louis telling you you can't come down here and do what you want with your life. You ride those bulls. You have fun. I'll see you on the TV. I always watch PBR. And it's like, that's, he, he fucking loves professional. Have you ever seen Urban Cowboy with John Travolta? No, I haven't. Movie, I guess. All right. Urban Physical Cowboy movie. with John Travolta. Yeah, it's a movie. It's a movie. It's about this, like, uh, he's not exactly a city slicker, but he's he's not really a, he's an urban cowboy. And what they do is they ride a mechanical bull and the stakes are high. Right? Right? Like, so, and, and, and he's like, he's John Travolta at, at like his prime. Like, he's, he's after Saturday Night Fever, but he's just like super good looking and he rides the, the horse. And it, like, like, I could, I, I'm, I'm shocked that you're the mechanical bull. I'm shocked that you didn't take that trajectory because it seems like, I, I'm thinking like if I'm 11, and that happens to me. I win the rodeo. I win the sheep ride. I get the girl. My first question is like, how big? How old do I have to be before I get to ride, you know, a, a, a steer? And then how old do I have to be before I can actually get on the bull with the big guys, you know? Because yeah, I would like, have seen. I, I'm. I, I got to see, like maybe half an hour after I finished up riding my my sheep. I got to see yeah. the adults have fun with the bulls Those and it was heroes. like oh they, they, well not uh, they are until you see somebody get fucked up <laughs> those are the bad ones though like you're the winner you won yes this. like you, i, I mean, would be you've thinking, already if i saw that i'd be what, like what yeah. chances the bull have <laughs> you're, you're like i'm talk dog over here in sheep riding like like i'm imagining that that man being stomped to death over there would probably a, be a shit sheep rider mm -hmm. i bet back in the day he was the one laying in the sheep shit over there crying with the brown ribbon the more you like, talk like, about this, the more I think I miss my calling. Dude, I bet you get so much cowgirl <laughs> pussy. Like, like that's totally a oh. thing. Like, like, like I, they, I bet like, they're they, fit too. Oh. Tight jeans. What have I I've done? Couple, they are fit. They, they've got <laughs> and they've got these really tight jeans. I'll tell you this: my grandpa's older than Trump, and he never has to drink a drink with two hands, and he would beat the shit out of Trump. No. I no believe kind. everything you're and saying. And his foreign yeah, this policy is probably all true. Yeah, and he's never made a mistake in relations with China. That's true. That's true. Not one. Not, not one in all his Chinese dealings. I'm going to have to talk <laughs> to my grandpa about running for office. He's a man of the people. Papa, I need to talk to you about something. <laughs> <laughs> I know you think that being the youngest candidate in this race will be a problem, but no. <laughs> Other presidents have been younger than you, Papa. Yeah. <laughs> Just go up there and say whatever you want. You're going to be way more likable than everyone on the stage. They're going to be like, man, Biden, Trump, these guys kind of suck. This motherfucker, James from Southern <laughs> Dakota, this guy's making sense. I also had a coon problem, and then I put out poison, and now my trash is fine. You know what? I want to know how he trains his blue tick hounds. Well, I'm going to go into extreme detail about that. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, what is your, what's your economic policy? Well... Just try and get everybody a job. Uh, back to the blue tick. Uh, <laughs> Does he have blue yeah. tick hounds? That they're for. He did at one did at one point have have a blue tick hound, and he he's had many many hounds over the years that he's. What trained. does he do with them? Hunts. What does he hunt with them? F fucking everything, whatever season it is. Does he go coon hunting? Yeah, yeah, he goes coon hunting. You ever do that? I never actually went with him to go coon hunting. It's pretty no. sad. Is it why? Well, they, they chase the raccoons with, that are rather intelligent through the woods until they climb into a tree for, you know, safety, because that's what they do. And the dogs, that their job is to tree them. And so the dogs all circle the bottom of the tree and, like, growl up at the, the, the raccoon to terrify it. <clears throat> and then the, the hunter comes along with a flashlight and a pistol. And he, your goal isn't to kill the raccoon. It's to wound it severely enough that it falls from the tree. Oh. That way... The dogs can fight it. Oh, Wait. just that's sad. Just and my grandpa didn't have running water until his twenties, and so he doesn't really give a shit. Well, that excuses it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he—I I told you the stuff he does. He like he went out with my youngest brother when he was like six, and and saw a squirrel on. He was teaching my younger brother to shoot. On a, just a little twenty-two, he took all of us and did this. And he was like, "I you, see that right up there." Yep, yep, shoulder it. You got it. You got it just like we practice. Get it right there. And he's like helping him to aim at a squirrel. His little 22, learning to shoot. My youngest brother <laughs> shoots it and just <laughs> good shot, apparently. Twitches and falls dead. And then my grandpa's just, ha <laughs> ha! 
There you go. There you go. That's one. That's the first one of many. That's the first one of many. Given those way too hard <laughs> farmer back of the back pats. You know, His hands giant, are just giant and thick and strong. Enormous, hands the size of my head just slapping way too hard. Congratulations. The size of what? My, my grandpa's a big fan. <laughs> and, my, and my youngest brother was apparently broke down weeping. <laughs> but she struggled. Over or how much he struggled over the, the the death of that poor little chipmunk or squirrel squirrel not a chipmunk, mm -hmm. and you know that's what you need. You need a grandpa that's gonna. I, I've said this before. He fucked with me when I was three because he's real good with his hands, and he made a real nice looking duck out of play doh, and he did that because I was spending all day that day. I was like maybe three years old trying to make something that looked like a bird that I saw at one of the ponds out of play doh, and it sucked because I was three, and then he like took time to make a real nice one. And he goes, here you go, Taylor. There's duck for you. And I was just like looking at it, studying it. Like, wow, cool. A man, someday I'm going to be able to this. And then he brings his giant southern Missouri farmer fist down as I'm like two inches from it looking at it. And he just goes, quack. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, it scared me so much. I just, I apparently was inconsolable for like half an hour over that. I'm three. And he was busting a gut. Just laughing so hard over it. My grandpa's a troll. He's a very funny man. And so all, he, all, he, all he wants now, he doesn't he doesn't give a shit about politics. He doesn't give a shit about what's going on in the world. He just wants to watch professional bull riding in peace. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he wants. He's not a NASCAR man. He's a professional bull riding man. Where every time I'll go into that room where he's sitting there after dinner just digesting, I'll be like, hey, who's this? He's like, fucking trash. So how does he feel about the Brazilians and the bull riding? Is he cool with it? Does he root for him against him? Doesn't care. Do you, maybe he, he likes uh, he he likes whoever's doing really well. He doesn't give a shit about the the race thing. Whoever's he'll even say like, it's interesting you brought that up. He's like, yeah, these Brazilians they're real fucking good, real fucking good. This failure Jose he come in, he rode the Titan, she <laughs> eleven seconds. You know what the second fastest one, the second most time. Some mother, some fucker ride it for, for eight and a half, barely made the cut. He rides it for eleven. Then it's like, like he he just loves bull riding, mm. immense. Yeah, so I, he's, when I brought it up, wasn't it was a national thing to me? Like, like is a there's the Texas good old boys, and there's sort of a culture there, and then these Brazilians come in and they're tough as nails, like really just fearless mm. bull riders. I guess they're all fearless, but he just wants he likes whoever can ride the toughest bull the longest, and that's mm -hmm. who is. I, guess I always know. thought it was like NASCAR, where you kind of care who won who wins the races, but you're really there to see somebody get stomped the fuck out. Hmm. I mean, that's entertaining too, because unlike NASCAR, one out of three from my limited bull riding experience, just sitting next to him after like dinners and such, watching it, these guys get fucked up constantly. <laughs> it's not, it's like every single time they're about to pull that lever and let the bull go crazy. It's, it's like a 70 30 chance with a 30 being that he gets absolutely fucked up and like the clowns bulletproof vests now like i'm sure they still get fucked up but i look at it and i'm like oh that's that's like a serious bullet it looks like a chill cowboy leather vest like you might see in a movie but you look at it a little more closely Kyle, the, go ahead. It seems like you might know that something. That only protects them from the goring that that protects them from full on penetration yes but they're getting crushed but it must still distribute even the crushing a little bit. Like if it's a it's hoof, off. but a hoof, it's going to take what was like one inch of pressure and turn it into three or four or something. Like it helps a touch, right? It'll, it'll keep them. It doesn't make them lighter. No, it's all about keeping the, keep, keep preventing a serious goring, I think. You know, just a penetration. But the they're getting crushed. They're breaking ribs and, and crushed. Like, let's do it this way. Let's say arms. I'm wearing a bulletproof vest and you punch me hard with your knuckle. With and without the vest, I feel like the vest helps a touch, right? The same's true for a winter coat, though. Yeah, it, it does help marginally, and that's what you like want. A bulletproof vest, like, like, is is anything special? Like, like, it's just it's just kind of tough. Like, it's it's not like thick. It's 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 thin. It's just a lot of like, I don't know. It's 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 a soft fabric. It's a it's it's not. The, the injury it, I see the most like has, has nothing to do with the goring. It's either getting trampled on like arms and legs and stuff, or it's, you know, they, they have to grab with one arm and, and yee-haw with the other as they're doing it because you can only hold with one arm. And what happens is, is as the bull bucks, their head comes down way too fast and the top of the bull head 
smashes into their forehead. And that's what seems to be the big cause of injuries is like they won't be able to stay steady enough. And then that bull bucks yeah. too hard. And then the hard skull of that bull is crashing into your forehead. And it's like, yeah, you're going to get concussed. You're going to get. Yeah, this has a ton of foam in it. Yeah, this is very different than bulletproof. This is cool. This is exactly what they fucking need. You know, no, they need helmets. <laughs> no, only a pussy wear a helmet. Bull fighting. One in seven guys, it seems like, is getting their skull cracked on the back of those bull skulls. What kind yeah, of but, um, farm did the grandparents have? Uh, cattle. Cattle farm. Did they have a tractor? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Quite a few. Did you get to fuck with them? Fuck with the cows? No, the tractors. Oh, uh, I mean, I, I never like drove them around on my own and farmed, but I would like when I was a kid, I'd ride around in them with my grandpa and, you know, do some work with him because it was just kind of neat to go down to the country and see like a large cattle farm operation and in, in uh, what they do with the tractors. Like, I don't know what, like they push poop around or something like clean the asphalt. What does a tractor do? On uh, a like, like, like baling hay. That makes sense. Yeah, so a lot of hay baling. I, I'm sure there's a lot more he was doing, like digging shit for fence posts or whatever the hell he was doing. Because these are these are like main like industrial tractors, not like um, not a state tractor. No, these are, yeah yeah these are big like big tractors because they had quite a few cattle. I don't remember the actual number, but they were a lot, and uh, that was just neat. I really liked cows as a kid because it was cool to go up to an animal that's so huge and also either afraid of you or completely indifferent and it was neat to like be able to go touch her and be like this thing's like like the biggest animal i've ever been close to and it doesn't give a shit like and i don't you know can you touch neat. them oh yeah like i just walk right up to the i just walk yeah. around and touch them i went yeah. to a cattle farm as an adult call me like 32 and uh they, someone said they'd pay me a hundred dollars if i could ride a cattle I'd ride a cow and i'm like <laughs> i'll give you a thousand <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, I didn't try and ride them like, so, I just, dude, I couldn't even touch them, right? They, 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 let alone getting on their back. I And I, I think I've told this story before. I'm like, you know, going by, not looking. I'm the dart and closer. And I, I was unable to fool a cow. They, I was outsmarted every time. And they're quicker over short distances than you might guess. And, yes, uh, they definitely are. Well, the way to touch them is you wait until they're all by the trough. And then when they're eating, you could be, you know, uh, a, a well-known cattle serial killer and they won't move like well, you, if I they're mean, eating they'll walk right up to you you can walk right up to them and touch them like as long as it's not like really skittish and the there's a little one here. are well-known cattle serial killers oh yeah yeah they that, that's a good point yeah. yeah yeah we were all serial killers yeah i would always feed them with like a, we call it sweet feed and like a bucket and they would come like you shake it in the bucket and they're really smart so so they'll come to that sound that's how we like corralled them all together when we took those pictures of wings like hanging out with cows and stuff. <laughs> we just like, poured the sweet feet out and got them to come. Um, but I never I've had the, uh, the thing that some little kids had where like when they see the animals, they don't want to eat them anymore. I can still remember like the question I'd ask is like point at different cows and be like, when's that one going to get eaten? <laughs> be like, well, ah, that's just a little one. We'll probably be a little while before we do anything of that one. And it's like, when's that one going to get eaten? Well, that's one of my bulls. We're not going to eat that one. I'll probably sell them off in a few years. And it was just like... I don't know, it was neat seeing, like, this is the food I like to eat wandering around me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yeah, would have been the opposite. I've, uh, I've milked cows before. Uh, that, that, was a, that was cool to see that, how that works uh, my, once. My I've father never had that. a client, and um, I don't know exactly what the deal was because I was just a kid, but I think that the client wasn't, like, a, an amazing success. So we would go over and get free dinner, I think, in part of a way to, like, pay the bill. And... Uh, he had a restaurant slash petting farm, like petting zoo. And like, so inside. Unlikely bedfellows. Yeah. <laughs> That's the funny part. Like, yeah, like in hindsight, I'm like, this is so unsanitary. Yeah, this this like, is disgusting. You know, and, and they'd be like, dude, dude, you should come on Tuesday night. He's going to shear the sheep. So like the owner of the restaurant would shear the sheep. And I don't know what shearing a sheep is like if this amount of blood is customary. But I oh, suspect no. he's bad at it. And oh no, oh, there be should be no blood, none. Oh, there was blood. There was an. I don't I, even want to hear about that. As a child, I was concerned and like, man, I, like I think he was just like, like you're supposed to shave it and leave, like maybe a touch. He just like, arr, arr, arr. and and 
the, the thing when he finished had cuts and wounds all over him, like oh, his back fucked. and his belly and shit. Yeah, that's shitty. This is like a pre-dinner show. No wonder he couldn't afford his bills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and he cheered. The, but my favorite was. Well, the, I'm going to serve dinner, and then we're going to have a learn to shear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I stored. It. He had a uh, baby calves, like and and we'd um we'd feed him with like a bottle. They had like a bottle, but it was bigger than a human baby yep. bottle. And uh, they would also suck your thumb, the calves, and uh, their tongues were much bigger than you might guess. You know, it, it's like eight times a human tongue or something. And when they suck your thumb, you're like, you can't just you can't help. In my opinion to fall in love with this calf. Like, you, you just hope it's never food to become somebody's pet. Sounds like it might have sucked more than your thumb. Yeah. <laughs> Very skilled tongues, those, those but, bovines. But, yeah, he had that, and he had a few arcade machines, a petting zoo, and it was one of my favorite restaurants. But they didn't have root beer. I, uh, I every, helped you, a calf. Or, you, go ahead. I was just going to say, you'd order root beer, and they'd say, well, we have birch beer. Like, that's the same. No, birch beer. I would beer try is... it. I don't know what that is. Really? Oh, birch beer is a poor man's root beer, I suppose. I don't know. It just they're not the same thing at all. Oh. Hmm. Anyway, I, I uh, uh, well, we're still on cows because hmm. it's enthralling. <laughs> I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on PK. I, I've never uh, had one suck any part of me, hmm. but I have like helped it. one give. I've had I've helped a cow give birth. I was like a cattle OBGYN for a day. Have I ever said that? Mm-mm. You have not. Okay, so basically. I was probably 16 or 17, and I was down at my grandparents' farm, and my grandpa was like, uh, hey, come help me with some shit. And I was like, okay. And so we went up to one of the farms, or one of the uh, the barns where a bunch of the cattle were, and he's like, that one over there, uh, 3760 or whatever, because they have the tags, is going to give birth. So you're gonna, I'm going to walk it through this thing, lock its head in the, uh, I don't know the name of it, lock its head in these like two almost like prison bars but uh like if you know when shoot bender grabs gate. what it's a it's a shoot and a head gate that you're a head that... gate so what it looks like basically is if you've ever watched futurama where you see bender kind of grab two prison bars and bend them so they're slightly out it's kind of like that just enough space that you can sneak the cow's head through there and then you close them around the neck so it's not squeezing it or touching it but they can't pull back out through it's kind of like so a chinese finger through, trap yeah like a chinese finger trap a bit and so he goes through the chute, gets in the, the gate, and my grandpa was like, all right, I'm going to do something from the front here. Or he had, he had to administer some medicine or something near the head, and he was like, you can't do this because if it thrashes or something, or I don't know what the danger was. But he said, you go behind it. And so uh, the legs were coming out first. I, I guess that's not the way it's supposed to happen. It's, not, it's supposed to come out legs last, maybe. And so it was just like a cow vag about five feet off the ground, and then like four crisscrossed little cow feet in there and in my head i'm picturing like there is no fucking way we're pulling this thing out of this cow veg like this is there's just physics you know and so wrap a chain around all of their the legs sticking out of the the vagina and tighten that up a literal chain wrapped around it and then i was standing there and my grandpa's like all right when i gave the word you're gonna pull and i'm like (laughs) how how hard do i pull like just a gentle pull so I don't ruin this cow's like vagina or just like a big pull. He's like, you're going to have to give it a real good pull. And I was like, okay. And so he's he's like right now. And so I just, I just go as hard as I could pulling this cow. I can (laughs) see it coming out. I can see the ooze, the afterbirth, just all of it just oozing (laughs) out like a little bit as it's coming. And I pull and I kind of pictured it would be almost like a, like it, the legs would come out and it would like drip down and then like another piece and it'd come out and then it would just kind of like fall like the remaining two feet and just go plop. No, yank it out. And it was like all at once, this thing came out of the cow, all of it, five feet in the air. And then <laughs> boom, just collapses. And I thought for a second, I'm like, Oh fuck, it's going to, there's no way that thing. Like it just began life with a five foot fall with all of its legs tied up. Like that's not a fun way to begin it. And as soon as I undid the chain, like it kind of got it like licked by its mother, get all that afterbirth shit off. And it was walking relatively soon, but Oh, that was, Oh, the amount of shit that really solidified what afterbirth is. And so I am prepared for the amount that a human woman can push out because the amount that it was a fifth of an Olympic swimming pool of goo that came out <laughs> in a big sack from this thing. And the sack was, of course, already punctured because it was leaking. And it was, oh, it's just the most grim 
uh, water balloon ever. Am I gonna live stream with Joe? Who the fuck is Joe? No, dude, definitely disagree about Netflix being the best at this point. Like, Joe Mama. <laughs> <laughs> got him got him <laughs> oh that's funny <laughs> jump, jump. Uh, you guys are funny this is fun i remember at like 20 being like 30 that's like never gonna happen that's not even a thing i'm a young guy like now i'm 31 and i'm like oh no I'm going to die someday. <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm sprinting to the finish here. And like, I'll be like thinking about my mortality while I'm overeating salty foods. And I'm like, I'm killing myself. How much time am I taking off my life with these snacks? Yeah. Like I, I got really high the other night and genuinely was sitting there. Like I was eating a little too much Halloween candy that my wife bought. And I told her not to get it four weeks before fucking Halloween. I knew that would be a problem. It's and really I, her fault. I, you ate it. it was, That's right. Yeah. I maintain that. <laughs> oh, this so is, what do you want, I, like I, I didn't deal on? I didn't bring this up on PKN because I was genuinely a little embarrassed about it. But like this past, <laughs> this past uh, Saturday, my, uh, uh, I was home alone. My wife was, was out. And uh, I, she had this giant bag of candy that she'd gotten for oh, trick or treaters, no. and it had been there for almost a week already. And I had resisted mostly, and like <laughs> it, it got to be that night, and I ate a bunch of edibles, and I was like just blitzed out of my gourd playing Age of Mythology or whatever. And like I looked to my right at the end of the night, and like my entire and like couch side table is covered in snickers wrappers oh. twix wrappers reese's? and like i uh, the they, didn't, they didn't have reese's thank god or i would have killed myself and the next morning <laughs> like i was just sitting i was i was drinking my Zevias, having my candy eating so much and i woke up the next morning like with a feeling of like oh I, I might throw up what's wrong like am i hung over i didn't drink anything and i'm like you fat fuck you have a candy hangover right now like <laughs> I, I really did like i i I, 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 just, I did not work out on sunday because i'm like i don't feel good <laughs> you ate you ate two pounds of candy and then it was like i should probably have a zevia like, I what? Just like <laughs> what the fuck i i just uh i, I just like the diet zevias. soda to go with your repeat that's, that's the FG. yeah everyone a, engages in delusion at that point yeah. <laughs> everyone engages in their own flavor of delusion I, and that's, no, that's true it, like, like, like if no i had a pet I don't leave the bag of dog food on the floor where the dogs can yeah. get to it. Clearly, you need to hide the candy from Taylor. You know she what's was funny? an irresponsible husband owner. She, li she literally asked me before, like, she left. She's like, I need to hide this from you. And I'm like, ah, pish posh. <laughs> and, she, and she did, because I ate all. By the way. I, I like, literally, I was in, like, a cranky mood all of Sunday morning, because I, like, I was, like, sitting, like, I had these plans to work out and everything. And I was sitting on my couch, like, I'm going to, I'm going to, in the middle of my morning shit, Sunday morning, I'm like, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw up I candy Taylor, we need to become bulimic i think that's our cutting strategy that could work but i don't like vomiting and that's yes, a huge yes. part of it look up uh look up the city museum in st louis it is this giant rundown building in downtown not in a good area at all at all and we used to go there as on a field trip as kids and it's basically got huge almost like makeshift looking metal devices and tunnels and slides coming out of this giant decrepit building and going back in. And as you are climbing on these things, like when I was like eight or seven, wow. I didn't dangerous. really care. But looking back, I'm like, holy fucking shit. Like there's no way uh, this stuff was up to code. Like th these were just weird contraptions and tunnels coming out of the building, then going to the top and then coming back around. Like you will not believe it. If you wanted like to fall, through, if you wanted to fall through these holes, and like the grate of these uh, these tunnels they made, it's basically like a rebar formed around into like a tunnel. But there's enough room between the bars that you could, if you wanted to, as a child, just push yourself through and fall to your death. Before you got into it, I, I was picturing like glass tubes, you know, swirling around. No, not at all. <laughs> no, this is like the Dominican Republic's version of a cool thing. Like it, yeah, look up. I'm sure there have that deaths have happened. Let me look. It, it made up. that shit with scrap metal and the charred remains of people's lives. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna say this off the top of the show. So, I had something happen to me this morning mm. that 
had to do with my contacts. So I'll say this. I've, I've worn contacts since I was six. I'm 31. So that's 25 years. In no YouTube video, no documentary, no clip, no story I've ever heard from anyone on earth have I heard of this happening. Never. Didn't know it could. So if you have good eyes, like I don't know if you guys all do or if you have contacts, I got, I got you, contacts you may in, think yeah. like, like I know Kyle has great eyes. So I have the contacts that you can sleep in like it doesn't hurt them to sleep in them. And so you might think that when I wake up in the morning, I see the way you do just like clear. But contacts, they take like five minutes, like three, five minutes to kind of get acclimated. It's a little fuzzy. And that's the way it is. And so I get up this morning and I begin my routine. I get out of bed. I go brush my teeth and I sit on the toilet to take a shit and I pull out my my phone. And I'm, I'm pulling up r slash hockey. I want to see if there's any trade news or anything. And I'm reading. And as my vision is clearing, I see a spider like here, like hanging from a thread, like in front of my face. And I go, Ooh, like a, just a teeny little spider, teeny little thing. But I see it and I, Ooh, and it goes away. And I look back at my phone and then I see that fucking spider up there again. And so then I go back to look, wondering how the spider could still be there. I hate and where I, I think go, this is going. I go yeah. to move my eye, and like a floater, this now clear spider body that is dead and crumpled, it is moving around my. It's oh, on oh, my. It's my. in my eye. I can. And I now I'm shooting. I haven't wiped oh, it. I'm starting to God. freak out because now I'm focusing, <laughs> and I go, I, and I go, and then I stop, <laughs> and I and I wait for my vision to come back. And I look at my phone, and then right in the middle of the trade news, there's a dead spider curled up. <laughs> oh I can see, I can see its legs. God. I can see all the fucking detail of it. I'm Oof. scared because I didn't realize in the first couple seconds that it was dead, but it had that classic curled up thing. Yeah. And so I, I take out my contact. I, I've never done this in my life. I used my finger. And like like a like a zamboni on my eye, and just rubbed <laughs> and pushed and moved around, and it was a horrible morning to wake up with a spider <laughs> in my eye. It was in my eye. I've never heard of that. That's never no, happened. I've never no. heard of that either. What, That's what terrifying. What happened? Like, Is that you think like, like spider... you were sleeping? You were sleeping, sleeping, and it like it nestled into your eye, and you kind of like closed your eye really tight on it while sleeping or something. I, I, yeah. It was so little. You it was a little baby death? spider. I bet that it was trying to get a drink from my eyes, and mm. then it drowned <laughs> on my contact. Your eye, your, your eye was a body a of water. Message. Yeah, what? this was. I, I'm like. I'm genuine. I'm not doing a bit. Well, I'm doing a bit, but like, I'm also very nervous to go to bed tonight. Like, oh, and, and like, I, I immediately called an exterminator and was like, I want you guys to come out to my house as soon as possible because I can't deal with this shit. And so what happened? You're like, spiders. there's a baby spider. There's a baby spider in my eye. It was like, you, you don't know how you react until like Dude. you see that. Th it could have been way legs. worse. It could have been you know, way no. worse because you could have gotten pink eye in all this messing around with your eye while you're shitting. And like, well, see, I trash. hadn't wiped yet. I wouldn't have been going. Okay. Oh my wild god! What if, if you had wiped. poop in your face? You like, 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 yeah. like, all, like, 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 you saw yeah, spiders. Pink eye all day <laughs> for <Yeah>. spiders. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll deal with pink eye for a week rather than spiders <laughs> in my oh, eye. Yeah. And I was that worried. Little... I'm like, what kind of spider is this? Like, did it Brown bite my eye? Is it's oh, little it's enough that there's eye. no way it like? Is it laying eggs in there? Yeah, they do that. They do. I wouldn't. I I would. That spider in the eye sounds the worst. Yeah, I'd, was, I'd rather was, was I'd rather you all memory. fuck me in the ass, me <laughs> included, than I get spiders in my eyes. Yeah, unironically, no agree. homo. Obviously. <laughs> no, make it as obviously. gay as the day is long. <laughs> Just don't care. No more spiders in my eye. It was it was such a scary way to wake up, and it wasn't That's until like after yeah. I got it out that it like really hit me in the morning, and I like got a bunch of heebie-jeebies and like yeah. almost like sounds dry like heat. you handled it all right though, because it really could have been. It could have been really bad. Could have been way like, worse. I would have yeah. like, yeah, like I would have been like punching my eye, <laughs> my eye out. I would have been freaking. I well, been I freaking didn't. Out. I thought it was under my contact at first. Oh. It scared the shit out of me. That'd and then once terrible, I realized yeah. it was likely, because like you know, if like a little thing like that gets stuck mm. in your eye, just like a speck of dirt, your eye has ways to like flush that out through tears. But under your contact, or I'm, I'm sorry, on a contact, it's gonna stick. Mm -hmm. And so clearly that thing just stuck to the outside of my contact the same way like dirt and stuff will if you leave your contacts in too long. It was a fucking rough morning. I'm still I I don't want to go to bed tonight. You're not <laughs> it's saying actually it's a can very, your eyes. It's crazy because it's a very low impact story, but it's actually insane. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's really not a big deal nothing bad happened but to me also i'm also like it's probably gonna be the most fucked up thing that'll ever it's happen it's so bizarre yeah. that your eye was able to focus on it being that yeah. close. 
But it, it makes me wonder if like he had a little message for you and you killed him before he could deliver it. <laughs> he like, like, like he was sending you a message from a tiny realm. <laughs> and, and look, I'll say this tomorrow, if you're reading the hockey news on the toilet and you see a tiny spider in your vision, give him a minute before you crush him. See what, he's, see what he's got to say. He well, might have a little poster my, board. I switched to my glasses immediately because I think this will be a better defense. Yeah. Like, you know, you know that old story where oh. they tell you things like, you know, when you, throughout your adult life, eight spiders will crawl in your mouth. And then you watch, watch like a real up. explanation of that. And they're like, yeah, believe it or not, spiders don't actively crawl into warm predators mouths like that's they, they survived billions of years because they don't do that. Mm. But they will drink out of your eye and die in there. <laughs> so be warned, everyone. <laughs> PSA. 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 I love that your eyeball was a body of water and like it was like excellent, uh, uh, like yeah. source of a uh, source like of an oasis. And it gets there yeah. and it's all glass. There's just <laughs> was, glass over like he was he was bamboozled by your contact. I mean, I, I took when I took my contact out, I was searching all over it and I couldn't find the little fucker on there. So I I don't know. Maybe maybe he's on like the back. Maybe he's gonna be like controlling me soon, like ratatouille. <laughs> redirecting me around feeding myself sugar or whatever spiders like and so he sent me what has to be 25 a 25 pound leg of, <laughs> oh of my prosciutto. god of prosciutto it's oh. we can't see it it's all fucking fucked up i get it's the idea fucking, is that gonna last one how many nights is that gonna last with you that would last a week in my house slicing off it prosciutto said, all night said, how do you even get into throwing the javelin, the discus, or the shot put? Uh, like, you lose a couple races, and they put you in that. <laughs> yeah. That's a, I know you, that. You I lose out on the track, and you go into the field. That happened yeah. to me. I know that happened because they happened to me. Yeah. In, in, in eighth grade, <laughs> I had put. to be on the track team, and I fucking hated it. I hated track. Uh, this is great. My parents were like, uh, you know, you got to do something before hockey season starts because we want you to be active all year. And I was like, whatever, track. Uh First meet, first track meet ever. I, I uh, to be fair, I had not shown promise in any event. Uh, <laughs> I, I, they kind of were just like, you know, you do this. Ah, oh, Jesus, all right, do that. I, and they put me in the hundred meter hurdles. Who would have thought that'd be the right team. event for their goalie? Go on. Yeah. <laughs> 100, 100 meter hurdles. They put me in it, and I'm there, and I look down the line, and the guy right next to me is a guy also from my school, and I know that he is really fucking fast at this because I've watched him do it really fucking fast next to me. And what I do, <laughs> there was only like, I don't know, like six hurdles or whatever, however many there are in a, in a hundred meter. I ran, got the first one off a bullshit jump, to be fair. This leg, right leg went over it, left leg kind of like went a swoop. You know, did a little <laughs> swoop around the side. Wait, I, I not get to supposed the next to. One. Is that illegal or one. just bad form? It's just that horrible form, form and okay. I'm pretty sure it's illegal. But I was like 14, so it didn't. Nobody was calling me on it. Uh -huh. I get to the next one. I make it over. I kind of I tap it a little bit. I give it. A, I give it a, a little bit of a shake, kind of. <laughs> Meanwhile, I, I already have an excellent view of who's going to win the race uh, <laughs> because right in front of me, there are three hurdles ahead. The third hurdle, I jump like almost half-assed. Like, what am I doing? Making an <laughs> asshole of myself. Everyone was so fucking far ahead of me, and I jump, knocked it over, and I shit you not, I didn't even finish the race i just went to the side and just oh, jogged it up to the end didn't jump over anymore just kind of like wave into the stands of all like the eighth grade girls <laughs> who were there waiting for their event they're like hey i'm so you know i'm over here talk to to coach uh coach kirk who was over there and he's like how about you wanna you seem like a shot put kind of guy I'm, like, well, I'm, I'm certainly not a running type of guy and, and he was like okay and honestly going to the shot put event after that was like wandering in to like a special bus scenario where this was not like unlike the the running of the the hurdles this wasn't the cream of the crop no one here knew how to shot put or distance <laughs> or javelin these were all the people that couldn't run and i, I performed well amongst that group no but uh, i was uh, yeah i was there were girls there so, <laughs> so i really really tore it up we oh, had God, the, uh... think that is embarrassing i can picture everybody oh, looking right? at me i went to a uh... When I was little, a Billy Graham thing, probably like first or second grade, like Billy Graham, the the evangelist who would go mm -hmm. around and have like revivals where he'd like show up in 
Atlanta or uh, St. Louis or Memphis or wherever and be like, every Christian, mm-hmm. come on down to the fucking Rams stadium or whatever the fucking uh, Falcon <laughs> stadium. And we're going to revive and get everybody up and, you know, everybody's going to be excited. We're going to talk about God. And it was like there were TV cameras. Like, and so basically, like we were sitting up in the seats the way we would for like a Rams game. And way up there, the entire bottom area where the field is, like the, the expensive seats are there, but most of it's just kind of open space, you know? And there's a big stage there, and Billy Graham's up there preaching, and I'm not at all paying attention. I got two hot dogs that night, though. Ooh. And uh, I was hanging out, doing that, and then at the end, he does this thing where he's like, and anyone today who would love to accept the Lord into your heart, come on down. Come on down and accept the Lord as your as your God. And so... Like none of the people I was there with were doing it. And I noticed the TV cameras down there. And so my hand shot up and I was like, I want to go. And so my mom was like, oh, that's so great. And so, <laughs> and so I just started walking down with her. And then when I like, we're walking hand in hand. And like, after I get down there, if my memory's correct. Cause like, I did believe in God and all the stuff at the time. And I went down there and there's like, hundreds of deacons or whatever the fuck like grabbing people's hands in prayer and like clasping with them and pray with me you know and help me be a a christ-like whatever the fuck and we get down there as as i'm seeing all of this these earnest things like people who really are earnestly wanting to be christians i like felt so guilty that i told my mom i'm like mom i just wanted to be on tv and she didn't get mad she didn't get mad she just made me pray with that guy, and then I got to go back up and get, have my second hot dog. Were you so on it, TV? No, oh. no, I was not on TV. It was a total bust. Not not at all worth it. And it didn't clearly the 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 cure didn't take. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Young Taylor shot the like a devilish look at the camera. You know? Like I don't know what it would take, but <laughs> that'd be perfect. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what was it at the time all the kids did they like made the blood sign with their their fingers oh, remember that a blood, blood sign what does that look like it's a, i don't remember how to do it you, but like you, you spell, spell out... blood with your fingers it, you know it's a street oh, game oh i have seen that i don't remember but i can't do it oh guys late at night you're watching my dumb ass do impressions and i start i start coming i start coming out of the screen oh you can't I'm gonna come. I'm gonna headbutt you. I'm gonna get you. Like a fat the ring. <laughs> and then I get and then I get stuck in your TV. I'll uh I'll tell the the tale of what went down. So you can see it. My arm's still wrapped up. It's more right here on okay. this inside. So basically for for my birthday, my birthday's coming up, and I never, I'm really bad at telling people what I want because if I ask for something big, I feel very guilty about it. And so usually what I do is like, no, I don't want anything. And then two weeks after my birthday, something shows up that I bought for 600 bucks. And they're like, my wife's like, what the hell? Like I would have bought you something. And so I was like, this time I was like, you know what? I want a hack squat leg press machine. It's like 1600 bucks. I've wanted it for a long time. It's far and away at 1600 bucks. The most expensive thing I've bought for my gym, triple up any of the other machines. And it's really? still more like all my other machines, are like 500 or less, like yeah. and sometimes way less this thing, 1600. And like the rationale is that like, it's very heavy built. It's very nice. Like everybody who reviews it says they love it. So I was the super Titan? excited. The Titan one. Yeah. yeah. I've been looking at it too. You call it a hack squat. Yeah. So yeah, it's got, it's... so it's at a 45 degree angle. You can lay on the bottom part and press your legs up oh, or you can flip the top to where it's little pads and then yep. you can do a hack squat as well. So it's a two and in one. Calf, and the calf raises too, because you're on that platform. Mm-hmm. So now you don't need blocks or anything. You're just you, you can there. do everything with it. It's super handy. And so I was really excited about it. <laughs> and last week on Thursday, it wasn't supposed to ship until like later last week than the show. And my wife tells me, she's like, hey, I just got a notification. It's not only shipped already, it's arriving today. And I'm like, oh. <gasps> Like it's 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 push Christmas day. on December nineteenth. Yeah, exactly. like, yeah, it's push day, but I can finish push day, and then I can go down. I can put it together maybe before the show, and then fuck around with it and have some fun. And as just happenstance, I'm in here doing some work, and I go out to get a water. And as I'm walking past my front window, I look out and I see the big truck, like the guys delivering it. I just happen to see it, 
And he's kind of at the base of my driveway. And I don't have a long driveway, but I've got a steep driveway. And he is clearly struggling. It's not in like a taped box. It's in like an ammo crate looking thing, like particle board with like the studs under it where you can slip in the um, a crate, the, the, the a pallet, pallet jacket. It, yeah, it's a crate. And it's got those metal kind of crimps on the corners to hold all the particle board together, all the plywood yep. and everything with the screws in it and everything. And so the guy's like, oh, hey, I was just going to drop it off here. But if you want, I can uh, we can push it up into your garage. And I was like, sure, this will be a lot easier. And I already noticed that he was struggling because he had put the prongs of the pallet jack incorrectly. They were under the braces. And so as you know, with the pallet jack, you're meant to stick it between the braces. So when Mm -hmm. you lower it, the pallet jack hits the ground and you slide it out seamlessly and then can stick it back in. Well, he did it wrong. And so it's all kind of hanging off and I'm pushing this thing as hard as I can, like a football linebacker sled. And we get it up into my garage, no problem. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And he's like, thanks a lot, man. I'm like, no problem. I appreciate it. And he's like, ah, he, he lowers his pallet jack and the whole thing goes. Doosh, and I hear the grinding of the pallet jack under like on my concrete. And he's like, ah, fuck, it's not coming off the pallet jack. And I want to be like, yeah, it's. You didn't do it right. Like, <laughs> there's only <laughs> right. one way to fucking do this. And it goes between the slats. Do you and see so, the pallet jack spaces? Put it there. Yeah, put it in fucking spaces, dude. And so he lowers it, and there's just the grinding of the pallet jack. And instead of, like, maneuvering, he's, like, just yanking on it, which is kind of pulling him closer to the driveway and the down area. And so I'm, I'm, I pull on the left side, and I grab it, and I... Uh, I heave it. I pull it as hard as I can, and it somewhat comes off on the left side of the pallet jack. It's the so heaviest. Heavy. It's the heaviest box on earth. <laughs> this, this container. And, and then, for my next yeah. trick, the basement somehow. <laughs> somehow, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna have to open it in pieces. And so then I go to the other side, and he's still standing up, pulling on this thing. And I wrap my arm around to where my arm is. Mm. Like here's the corner of the box, uh-huh. and I as hard as i can the thing clunks off onto the ground and he's like oh thank you like and i feel like what i think is like a bee sting level of pain on my arm and i do kind of a half-ass glance down like expecting a scratch and there is a hole in my arm very deep yeah there, there's my arm and I immediately go like I've never Those St. Seen... Louis hospitals do it differently than we do here. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> that was the job me and the US UPS man did. And so <laughs> basically I immediately go like my instinct because I can see the the entire all the skin is perforated, the meat, I can see the fat and the muscle tissue. Like I can see all the fucking meat and the darkest red blood starts pouring down my arm like it's soaked in two seconds and my instinct was to like try and grab it and pinch it closed and i was like uh i need to go to the hospital and the guy was like well i can't take you to the hospital i'm like no i don't want you to take me to the hospital just oh hold on don't leave don't leave yet and so i like i'm pinching my arm closed walking back into my kitchen through my garage blood is everywhere and i'm like walking through my kitchen on the hardwood down towards my hallway because I wanted to get a towel from my hallway closet. But then I'm like, fuck, I'm going to ruin my carpet if I walk onto this. And so I find a clean dish towel and I'm looking for tape and I hear the guy, the USPS guy in the garage, he goes, I got tape! I found it! I found tape! And I'm like, thanks! And so I am still futilely trying to pinch this wound closed. There's so much blood, I can't get a a purchase on it and there's no way to close it. It's... It's so gross. I go out there and they and I I slap the the towel on and the I'm, the I'm like thank you so much for not leaving right away. Tape me up, you know. I don't want to bleed all over my car on the way to the the urgent care or the hospital. And he tapes me up good. He's like, Ooh, wait, hold on, don't don't leave yet. Let me get another good round on there. My wife's a nurse, and I was like, I appreciate it, man. <laughs> and so and so my arm is is duct taped with a dish towel on it. Hold on, let me fly this. My dad's a pilot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And as he's like getting back Where into she? his car to like try and continue his day, day of deliveries, I'm like peeling out like thanks, and it's just like driving to the to the urgent care initially and then i called my dad on the way there and because he he's not a doctor but he's adjacent and works very closely with a lot of doctors familiar with that 
uh, that industry and everything. And I was like, Hey, don't freak out. But I just stabbed myself so bad, like worse than it's the worst injury I've ever seen in person is the way I put it to him. I've uh-huh. never, <laughs> seen it, I've never in my life seen a cut more intense than this in person. And he was like, okay, so it's through the skin. And I'm like, oh, it blew, <laughs> it blew so far past the skin. Like it was like the, the width of it, it's at about 10% of the total, like kind of width of a exacto knife. Okay. And make it much longer than the exposed point of an exacto. I'm trying to figure it out. It's a long. You could put a crayon in it. You could you could have stick stuck multiple crayons in it. How many? Okay. You probably could have at the time of it opening. You probably could have got five, six crayons in. I'd have gotten seven. I guarantee. You, I bet you could have. But <laughs> I, I was. <laughs> You know what? I'm patting myself on the back for my crayon. Unit. I've played this game before. <laughs> <laughs> Not I, I called my dad and I was like, hey, you know, I told him all that. And I'm like, should I just go to urgent care or what? And he's like, do not go to urgent care. It sounds like you got like real deal damage in your arm. Can you grip everything? Can you feel everything? And I'm like, yeah, I have full grip. Thankfully, my forearms are so jacked that there was a layer of muscle and fat under it a, a week a smaller man would have, would have died in the, the garage. arm would have fallen off like out of the arm would have fallen off you know what I, might have powerful. I might have hunted down a tampon for the ride to the hospital it was this guy taped it up so well that it didn't leak the whole way there now when they eventually took it off the entire towel was soaked with blood, blood like wet but i i i listen to my dad i go to the hospital and yes. it is you know, you know how triages work in hospitals. Like everyone who's older than you who shows up goes before you. It do, it's not a line. It doesn't matter when you get there. And so, like, I'm just watching myself sink further back in line as the day goes on, which fucking blows. Because it's like, it's like, oh, you have a forearm laceration. It's like, yeah, but like, you can't tell with the duct tape. It's it's legit. It's a legit a one. Like, I'm not overdoing it. Yeah. When it, next time something like that happens, it sounds like you went to a big ass hospital right yeah i just went to the closest actually that wasn't even because that's what i was told to go there that's what makes sense and i bet it was the best care you could have probably gotten but if you'd driven like two hours into the country and went to some little podunk dunk hospital it would have been crickets when you went inside hours into the country (laughs) he waited longer i waited (laughs) longer than that just to get in and like like when i did go back and get in yeah yeah while we're doing suggestions the hospital you went to, if you cared about it, I know you're a man who has a forearm scar, but plastics would be available there. And you yeah. can just request it. And typically your insurance will cover it and be like, mm-hmm. you know, if it was your face, even as a guy, like ask for plastics. If you don't, you won't get it. You'll get whoever's in the ER just will mm-hmm. sew you back up and keep you alive. But that's not what you want. Like if yeah. you care about your fucking scar ask for plastics i've learned this in my life i'm sorry carry on with your story I, no no i no, I've great that too. and i really wanted to i it, it's a forearm thing so i just wanted it done quickly like just just get it done if it scars a bit really not a big deal right. so at, after at long last i get brought in the back and they they start to take scissors to remove they do the thing like are you gonna are you gonna want to keep the towel i'm like <laughs> are, are you is there, a, is there yes. another doctor that here is like, grandma's is, towel my yeah. gift to you <laughs> yeah, you can have that we can I'm consider like, a payment for the stitches if you want <laughs> I'm a barter. Like, just just cut it off so they get those big jaws of life scissors and they go through the 15 layers of duct tape and the towel and i don't i don't know what it's going to look like under my under the wound because like last time i saw it it was over an inch deep like just a hole with an enormous amount of blood pouring out and what happens apparently is like your arm repressurizes and like starts to push like the meat almost like to the surface and almost out have you ever seen like a twice baked potato or a woman with an outie vagina yes yeah even better so it's so they they remove it And like, I'm grossed out by it. So I don't want to look, but I have to know what it looks like. And it's like the meat of my arm is like cresting above the surface of the skin. And the, and the, it was a resident doctor. So like, I guess like the level below the real doctor who started, you know, numbing me and stitching me up. And 
she looks at this enormous, and I don't know anything about stitches. I've never had stitches, but I what? she looks at the wound, and the only bone bone I've broken is my nose a couple times. Kyle, so have I, you I, never had stitches too? I've had so many stitches. Oh yeah, I'm in the hundreds. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Yeah, you've had it. so many stitches. <laughs> so I've had uh, I've had twenty stitches. Okay. Yeah, and so I I, I was like, I'm, I'm curious. Is this gonna hurt? Is it gonna be like totally numb? Well, it turns out they numb the shit out of you. They could like chop your arm off, and you wouldn't feel it. But she looks at the amount of damage in my arm and is like, okay, not not too bad. I think this is gonna be about three stitches. And what? in my in my mind, I was like, these I don't know, but those must be beefy stitches or something <laughs> like I don't. And she sewed me up. And again, I don't know about stitches, but have you seen zombie movies where, <laughs> yes. where like the wound is open for all intents and purposes and it's pinched together kind of in three yeah. areas across? Yes. That yeah. is what my arm fucking looked like. And she starts wrapping it up with the gauze and everything. Uh-huh. And I don't really know the difference. I'm like, well, that's horrifying. Like it's still oozing out. There's still like v- blood and viscera and stuff coming out of my arm when they push on it. And she was like, all right. She wrapped it up. And then the, the real doctor came in and was He's like, let's take a look. Right? That's the name. Of yeah. It. Yeah. The attending yeah. physician, he came in and was like, all right. So I see that Susie Q got you stitched up. Let me take a look. And he unwraps it and he goes, oh, like, <laughs> like, a, <laughs> oh, OK, well, we're going to add some more stitches here. <laughs> and he was like, do you do you want me to renumb the area? Like, do you feel this? And like, I had to make a, a decision. I didn't know. I was like, I kind of feel you poking, but not like really. And he's like, well, do you want me to, we can renumb it, but that'll take, I'm like, just go very quickly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and like, him to go fast. And so then he starts sewing in the, and he adds four more stitches in between all the gaps. Meanwhile, well, I'm close. like, I'm seeing the beginning of like a terrible scar because of how badly this is going, has has been put together on my arm and Mm. even with the seven stitches there's there's there was still a triangle of red slice eight would have hit the spot (laughs) no i I showed it to someone who is in the medical field i showed them the wound a few days like after the fact so it's already started like starting fusing back together and they were like oh my god that you needed 10 stitches like for sure 10 stitches here this is terrible like they did a terrible job of this and i was like you know it seemed like it but yeah, I can't. I'm not. It happened a last Thursday. I think I've got ten days. All right, I can take off the sutures between one and two weeks, and they said to take like ten days off of lifting. But I'm gonna play it by ear. Just on it, based on all the injuries I've had, it sounds like they should have done yeah, you know, like a good six internal stitches to get that mm-hmm. together, and then a good ten maybe external stitches, and then the whole thing would be sewed up. The yeah. internal ones are. I'm going to say biodegradable, but like, you know what they mean? They dissolve, yeah. your body will take them apart. And the external ones often have to be removed. And Which feels great. You do that yourself, by the way. Oh, I know. Yeah, you're going to. Oh, die. really? They, yeah, they, feels great. they sent me home with a suture removal kit. Yeah. This has to be like, <laughs> uh, they don't always do that. And they didn't used to do that. I, I, I think like locked. some of my <laughs> stitches were in the days when like mom stayed overnight after delivery and, and mm-hmm. like, there were professionals there to like care for the baby and stuff. Now, 45 minutes after that baby pops out, they send your bitch ass home and tell you to start momming. <laughs> you, know, you just limp around breastfeeding or something. That's current <laughs> medical care. So the remove your own stitches thing is just par for the course. Okay. They they asked. They were like, you can All come right. back in and do this, or you can take this little kit for free and give it a go. I was I like, cat just, too. just give me the kit. Yeah, it used to be nurses ca- took care of your kid till tomorrow. Like that was like a thing that nurses did. No more. No, no more. Longer. Now you you know don't be a bitch. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I missed the show. Everyone in is listening. I stabbed myself with a piece of metal. Well, badly. Right after the the next day, you know, uh, something equally bad befell me. Obviously, you know when yeah. when I dropped the blade to my food processor onto my foot there. Um, you know dude it, that it, happened as i was sending pictures of having stabbed myself You're they like, were like <laughs> the, the pictures crossed in midair <laughs> how did you drop the food processor on the bottom of your foot like that is confusing so you know how like when you step your foot is moving forward mm-hmm. and toes are pointed up 
when you yes, swing your yeah. foot. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah, that's when it hit my foot. I was mid gait or mid step or whatever, Ooh, and it works. was falling. And it, 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 the toe was pointed straight up. And if this is like the tip of my toe, it goes from like almost the nail all the way across the tip and the bottom of it. And uh, I immediately like dropped the pan I had in my hand and, and like wrapped it up. And I was like, we're not going to the emergency room. I refuse. I refuse to go to the emergency room. And uh, I, I like undid it. And there was a pool of blood, like as big as like a dinner plate. And I was like, I refuse. I literally got on the couch and like elevated it and like kept it squeezed really tight. And, it, it, and eventually it stopped enough that I could get some super glue in there. Pinch that I was bit, wondering what you shut. went with. Yeah, yeah. I, I alcohol swabs and like got it clean enough, and then a fat thing of um super glue, and I wore latex gloves and I just held it shut for a while with the fan blowing on it, and pretty much good as new. How's good. uh walking on it now? Sore. So you're tender with it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, I take those Epsom salt baths though, and uh I don't know if there's any actual like flesh exposed i made like a cake of super glue over the wound so hopefully oh, yeah. that works it, it works itself out yeah super glue quite the lifesaver in the yeah i know situation. it was invented for that purpose everyone throws that out there when they hear the words did you yeah. know yeah we yeah. all know by now everyone knows super glue was made to hold skin together someone's listening right now i didn't know <laughs> did you know steve buscemi volunteered to for 9-11 like, shut the fuck up we all know that <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah well i'm glad both of you are okay yeah it was it was a harrowing weekend for us both equally well, i think i'm doing acro next weekend so i I'll thought i you mean my... sepsis sets in i'm I, I i i'm not here there it is yeah i didn't, I didn't go to get any medical care like some people i don't know like like me as a pussy <laughs> going to, oh you got cut, cut by metal you want a tetanus shot no i did i got a tetanus shot because they were they were asking me to like have you had one in the last 10 years and i'm like i couldn't tell you gun to my head let's assume no i have no idea and then like on the way home I remembered I got one in 2017 when I almost cut the tip of my thumb off. Oh. And so I, 10 years is how long it lasts, I think. I yeah. agree. They should think 10. be better at that. Like, I know there is some sort of cyber system out there that tells you all the things you've taken. Like, mm -hmm. I, I got a physical recently, and they're like, are you still taking this, this, and this? And I'm like, no. What, what was mm. that for? Like a post surgery? Like, no, I'm not on opiates. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I'm on yeah. a daily opiate. <laughs> I'm on daily opiate. Said, life has been a struggle. <laughs> That's like asking your wife, do you still take these epidurals? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like on par That's with strong that. stuff, you know. <laughs> That's not but I'm like, it you, came from how somewhere. How are you walking? And I've never been to this like minute clinic before. So. Yeah, yeah when, I, when I like gave them my information, they're like, uh, at one, two, three, uh, Simon's Court. I'm like, I moved from there when I was 11. <laughs> like that was 2001. We we uh, had we had a flag out to remember the towers when we like, uh, when, when, when we, moved. we moved from Gosh, that. Yeah. Like, okay. on Earth uh, is that where you think I live? But yeah, overall, I I was asking the doctor and everything like, how long do I have to take off lifting? And the guy was like, I mean. I guess you could go lift now if you wanted. And I was like, I am not going to take your advice on anything <laughs> because that doesn't make any It's like, you're telling me I stabbed my arm four and a half hours ago and, <laughs> you're, and I can go deadlift now. <laughs> like, like right now. Well, you like, have three. Students. You should have, you should have said, <laughs> you should have said, just to be clear, like when I say lift, I mean 400 pounds several times tonight. Like, you, you know that, right? <laughs> oh, I don't mean groceries. well. Don't do that for like a month and a half, then. Oh yeah, I can tell. It's like I can push on stuff, and it I don't feel anything if I like pull on anything. Like I tried to close a window with my right hand the other day, just by force of habit. That feels weird, but I'm I'm just thankful I don't have any numbness or anything. Which once yeah. again, it, thanks to my thanks to the years of farmers carries at the end of workouts. That Literally, it, that's what yeah. I, know. I I, I need it. my. My foot feels so weird when you rub the scar when I drop that stupid butcher's knife on it because like the nerve is like mm -hmm. fucked up in there. So if you wiggle it, it's like shorting out a wire. It's, it feels <laughs> fucky. You're like you were talking about how it took a while to get medical care, and I recognize now how bad the cut was. Like it was legit, and they may not have given you the care. Like they may have prioritized you a little more if they knew what they were looking at. Yeah. 
maybe not Susie Q. She doesn't know what the fuck she's looking at. <laughs> but, uh, it reminded me when I came in with Colin, he was like, like vomit Ooh. on his chest, white as a ghost, axe wound to the foot. And they're like, front of the line. Here's his bed for you, sir. <laughs> yeah. And you don't always want to be front of the line. This is like, it's, it's kind of sad. But like, as I was leaving the hospital, like in a pissy mood of like, this is bullshit. I can't even move the equipment for my shit out of my garage for almost two weeks because the pieces are too heavy. God, what a bad luck day. Miss the show, feel like shit, <laughs> mad. And as I'm walking out, like the doors to leave with my wife and I, there's this guy laying on his side on a gurney, oh. like, like a middle-aged guy, just like, and I like immediately was a surge of like life's not all bad yeah, like, you're like, like, you're like whistle I'm all blessed. the way to the car I am, I am truly blessed like I don't know what happened to that guy but he's in his work clothes just <laughs> um, you know I, I, I saw a great opportunity I, I went after it uh, are you vaping on the air right now bro I am it's, that's uh, He's not getting high, if that's what you're thinking. No, no, no. I just, I'm just very excited to see you vaping. It's very, <laughs> it's very relaxing. I don't watch, approve, but to I'm... watch to watch you vape. You know, that's that stuff's just as bad as the cigarettes, man. Yeah, but not until like evidence comes. Right, out. Yeah, I right. Need the evidence. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I... Thank you, Mike. Yeah, yeah, if lung, if lung no... cancer happens in the woods and no one's, until then and I'm going to keep study isn't published. Like those eagle energy uh, power <laughs> sticks because there's nothing wrong with them, folks. Nothing wrong with them at all. I, I, I'm, I'm so weird. hungry, I'm about to pass out. Uh, yeah, well, you look know, like you fucking can't fucking lose a few pounds. Just relax, so you'll be all right. I'm working <laughs> towards ketosis. it. You're fatter than I am. I am. I <laughs> hey, listen, I went from two six, almost two sixty. I'm down to 225 today. You're living in a glass house, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> this fat fuck really told me to lose to weight. <laughs> oh, oh. Guys, oh I better not catch you in prison. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I better not catch you 40 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> I got to shake this fucking guy. I see him on the street. <laughs> uh, you do your best, bud. <laughs> no, no, you better hurry up. Old age creeping in. You're right. But if I get you well, we're all long, short on really time here at DKA. So <laughs> thank you, Larry, so very much for coming on tonight. Um, I, I, I love your stories so very much. Yeah, they were um, great. Because when I was in high school, uh, I had a group of friends and we would go to this place called Sky Zone. I don't know if that was like all over the place or it was just like a regional thing, but it was basically uh, floors and walls, not like straight up walls, but like the angled kind and then the floor of uh, trampolines there's all trampolines and you could go into like the free jumping area and like fuck around and do like crazy flips and whatnot but we never did that they had a dodgeball course there a couple of them and it was like the same thing tons of trampolines on the ground and then like trampolines on the side so you could like jump up and do like flips off the wall while you're dodging and throwing it was really really cool and fun and we used to go there me and a group of like four other friends uh and we'd go and play like uh pub matches i guess is the the equivalent of that we'd go and play any takers and we would thrash people we didn't lose ever ever playing against in our pub matches like it, it got to the point where like we all pumped each other up enough like we'd like leave there and go to steak and shake uh or something nearby and be like yeah we're, we're pretty fucking good at this did you see they have a tournament <laughs> did you see they have a tournament for this stuff dude let's enter the tournament it's only like 15 bucks a person and we'll, we'll go, we'll play in the tournament and who knows, you know, maybe we'll do decently well. Maybe we, we're not going to win, but we'll, we'll do okay. I'm sure like we beat everybody and it's the same kind of thing. Secretly as like, holding out hope you will win. Yeah. Like you'll <laughs> like, there are clips of like, there was this guy from like a few years ago named John Scott in the NHL. Who's like six foot 10 or something retarded and was just an enforcer. And next to NHL players when he was playing, he looked terrible. Like just like was not on the level of the other NHLers. But then you watch clips of that guy with like normal humans and like normal hockey players, like beer league guys. And you're like, holy shit, this guy's got dangles. He's got hands. He's <laughs> skating up and down. He's moving back and forth real quick. And like, like that was the level of skill difference that like was shown to me after this is we show up. And first thing I notice is we're the only team that doesn't have a uniform. <laughs> <laughs> I showed up, we showed up in t-shirts and shorts. We're a bunch, we're a bunch of 16 year old guys. And everybody else has like 
ball fondlers or like <laughs> other 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 sexual puns and stuff written on their chest and and the other thing i noticed at first is like oh no these are adults <laughs> all of these are adult men in their uh like mid 20s mid 30s like fit active men and there was one big fat Samoan guy on like the ball <laughs> fondlers team or something. And I'm like, well, hopefully we get put up against them. Cause I can hit that guy. No problem. Like he's not jumping anywhere. He's going to puncture a hole in the goddamn trampolines. <laughs> and so thank God we got paired up against this guy's team in the first round. And like they, they have all the balls in the middle, you know? And so as it starts, what we used to do is we jump to the middle. Looks, it turns out that we didn't have a physics professor on our team <laughs> because the other guy did this crazy thing where he was like skipping across <laughs> the, the trampolines. We're like, how's he getting this kind of speed? <laughs> like, he was, like he wasn't elevating himself. He was going like, hadoo, 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 hadoo. Like, a, like one of those like, uh, 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 running uh, lizards across water. Like Jesus Christ lizards, like that kind of thing. And, and so we get there. We, we are, our team only gets like three of the balls. They get like seven. And we're in the back kind of like bounced up and down. Like, all right, you, all right, we've got to wait and let them throw some first before we start going. And the big fat Samoan guy hasn't moved. He's <laughs> standing on the back in between where the trampolines are on one of the hard areas. And one of the guys who grabbed one of the good balls, everybody who plays dodgeball knows that there are the good balls and the shitty balls. And he grabs the good ball. Gives it to you know the guy who looks like he's saying uh, somewhere over the rainbow uh, in that in that, that giant uh, you know the guy who died big fat yeah, fuck yeah. and it gives it to him and he immediately just he fires a dodgeball harder than I've ever seen <laughs> anyone throw a dodgeball in my life this guy's like, boom they, it was there, there was no fucking arc there was nothing it was a frozen rope just <laughs> boom. Hits my buddy, who's usually pretty good at catching, just <laughs> hits him so hard it bounces back. One of their sly guys does his little hata, 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 skip and maneuver, grabs it again, gives it to the big guy. He, boom, fires another one out, gets another one of my friends out. I'm already realizing this was a poor decision and wasted $15. <laughs> I, like, we, we tried getting them so hard. We maybe got two of their guys out the whole game, and we got pummeled. Like, all six teams or whatever were playing on like two of the three courts and our game was over when they were like a third of the way through their real game with real men. It was terrible. By the time we got to match three, the active conversation in our group was how many more are left? <laughs> like how many more times do we have to go? Do we have to go against big Samoan guy again? Cause I don't want to, I don't want to play that way. One of my friends got hit so hard and was so discouraged. We had an extra friend there who ended up pinching in that he goes, I'm fucking done with this. This isn't fun. And so he went up to like the balcony to watch us get our asses kicked. Douche. Uh, you know who I'm talking to. If you're listening to this Carter. Uh, but yeah, that, this, that it was not a fun experience, but it really opened my eyes to like, wow, I thought I was genuinely really, really above average, bordering on pretty good at dodgeball. And these guys demonstrated that we suck cock and we didn't even have the wherewithal to stop at a, you know, uh, screen printing press for shirts area and get a clever name. So that yeah, was, I didn't that have was anything fun. like that. My mom this year bought me a Christmas present and was like, <laughs> she Please told me, she's like, oh, this is going to be so funny, Taylor. I saw it. It was a joke from the podcast that you do. They all say that you look like an owl. And so I bought you this owl with <laughs> in it. What is it? Money? Rocks? No, potpourri. Like, it's potpourri. a really, it smells really good. So I do like it. I like smell good stuff. <laughs> Globalists, the eagles are trying to, to take over our society. And you should be able to eat as many crickets as you want. That's as many bugs, anything as you want. I like the red, I like the ladybugs because I find that it gives a nice red tint to my, my feathers. That's what I prefer. But these motherfuckers, I, they tell you to eat grub worms. They tell you to eat grub worms. I tell you this, I ate a couple grub worms. I started feeling a little gay. I'm not saying it's true. I'm saying that I'm, I'm just asking questions. Um, I used to drive carpool in high school for a while and I picked up a few people in my neighborhood. Uh, one was a girl a little younger than me, a couple kids younger in the back, all middle school age except for me and the older girl for the most part uh drove them all to school picked them all up on the way back and they would always start unbuckling their fucking seat belts before i got to their house because i had like three houses to stop at and i would always yell at them and be like just keep your fucking seat belts buckled not because i gave a shit about their safety but because they start like rummaging and doing all their shit and it just 
piss me off and stress me out. And I was like, can we just get you out of here so I can fucking go home? And so I would always do seatbelt tests. And I was in my Jeep Grand Cherokee and I would be going like 35 in the the neighborhood. And then just right before we were going to get to their house, because they were anticipating me slowing down slowly and easing up, I'd just go, just slam on the brakes. And they would surge forward if they kept their seatbelts on like I would instruct every day. They would go, <laughs> and then they'd fall back and be like, God, Taylor, you fucking asshole. And I'd be like, just keep your seatbelt on. And one of the kids one day, I, I started to do it hard. Like the hardest ever, I got up to like 40. It became like a game because my brother was oh, in the shit. back and he thought it was funny. I just slam on my brakes. Woof. And one day, the kid in the back that I wasn't related to, unbuckles way too early. I didn't know. Taking him to his house. He's in the middle. The two seats in front of him are on the sides. So I slam on the brakes so fucking hard. He flies up, <laughs> hits my dashboard, crumples like with his head up on like the dash and like his body down, like where the shifter is. And I'm just like, oh shit, shit, shit. Cause his mom's like bringing <laughs> snacks out to him because I'm the carpool. I'm like, just get in the, get in the back of the seat. Just get in the back of the car. Don't you, don't, don't you fucking tell him about this. Don't you fucking tell him that I've been doing uh, d- seatbelt testing this whole fucking time. Don't you tell him about that. If they pay me to drive you to school, you're not going to tell them about that. He's like, all right, Taylor, it's fine. And uh, I, I stopped doing it that way. But uh, yeah, he almost really hurt himself. He was That's, like dazed no, no, for a no, second. No, 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 he didn't. No, he didn't, you asshole. You almost really hurt him. That's what happened. Okay. <laughs> Look at how your brain made it right. And you didn't even notice. <laughs> no, he, you know, he should have stayed buckled up. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm doling out life lessons over here. Yeah, I was gonna say. Good reference. Not taking good reference. <laughs> yeah. It seems like going forward, he'd wear a seatbelt. You may have saved his life. Guarantee it. Well, with you at least, because he knows you're a bad driver now. No, no, those were <laughs> all intentional stops. They were intentionally bad. The sure. way they pick those people that you were seeing, the cream of the crop, like those are hand picked. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hope does it now at her school. I have a story where I, uh, the person who usually did that, like the ambassador to the school or whatever the fuck, or the some goody two shoes kid, like Hope, who does very well in school, uh, they picked me to replace him one day because they asked me, would you mind mind doing this? Because uh, I won't say, because Michael isn't here today to do it. And I was like, fine, whatever. Like, I'll do it. Uh, So. You basically get a kid for the whole day where he comes in and stays a whole day at the school and looks around. So it's it's almost like you get to skip class a little bit because you can make stuff up and be like, well, we're going to leave about 10 minutes early because we got to make sure we get there and to make sure this new kid, you know, he's the priority. Uh, so I got a kid from Kenya and he spoke English all right, showed up. You know, he was adopted by parents. I don't fully get it. Missionaries apparently just go to Kenya and then they hold tryouts and then they pick the kid who wins and adopt him and bring him back to the U.S. <laughs> and I guess this kid won the competition, like the, the 06 fits. winner. And he came in and they're like, Taylor, you need to show him around and take him to all your classes today. And I was like, all right. And so I, I didn't have any experience with it. So he was asking me questions that I didn't have answers to, like, and uh, what – what is it the uh, time to do if uh, if I do not uh, bring a lunch? And it's like it's fine, man. Like you can you can just go down there and, and they'll give you some lunch. Like I'm sure not, they're not going to make you pay. Like it's no big deal. And he's like, oh, I understand. And it's like, okay, I, I don't know if you do, but we're going to keep going. And <laughs> then, was like, he deaf? Like, lunch lunch rolls around, and I get in line. He's behind me, as far as I know, just standing behind me. I go through, get all my stuff get my food and i have like the two vouchers or whatever for me and him because i got my lunch free that day for being a good samaritan and i turn around to find him and this kid's fucking gone and i went <laughs> to private school and so i could pick out a black face back there in this crowd of people <laughs> if need be. like i should have been able to be like boop gotcha come over here like, <laughs> jog it up you're good at that like, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and really nice guy but i looked back and he was fucking gone and so I backtracked, went through the whole line, this weave, couldn't find this kid. And I looked around the entire lunch hour, first being like, God damn it. Like, I told him to stay with me. By the end of like the 45 minutes, I haven't eaten. I can't find this kid. I checked all the bathrooms. Uh, I, I was just looking around the school desperately, and I didn't want to go up to the whatever lady runs this shit and be like, hey, you know how three, almost four hours ago you told me to watch this guy? <laughs> I, I botched it. My bad. I'm so sorry. And I didn't want to do that. So I looked around, skipped my next class, just walking around trying to find this Kenyan kid who nobody had, had brought back in yet. And I found him at the tennis courts. No tennis ball. No tennis racket. 
he was just sitting on the tennis courts and he told me it was because it was a really nice day. <laughs> and you gotta so, learn to appreciate the little things, you know? Yeah, but it was like, d- d- dude, like, you almost fucked me here. Like, <laughs> That's it, the main like concern. For losing you and you're just sitting out here on the tennis courts. Like he didn't, he didn't even look over and have a look of like, Oh, you know, Oh, you found me. It was just kind of like, Oh, he's here as well. Now we're both on the tennis court. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know he was lost. Yeah. He didn't know he was lost. He was just enjoying it. But, uh, I didn't ever do, I never got asked back to, mm. to do that. Well, program. you did a great job. Win, win. <laughs> he did end up going to the school. So I guess I was pretty good, you know, like, <laughs> uh, I guess he just thought you could walk out to the tennis courts whenever. So <laughs> take a break. Guess who they were going to go with in that role? Chris Uh-oh. Rock. Wesley, Wesley Snipes. Snipes. Really? <laughs> Taylor, I just drew something on this page. Is it a circle, a triangle, or a square? A triangle. Oh! oh. God we have damn! Like an Indiana Jones book. What is sports that? picks? Like a... Sports picks. Sports picks. We gotta. We gotta take advantage of this. Who's who's playing right now? I need to make an account on a gambling website first. I don't know how I, to do that. Like, like I'm... in the words of my friend who stole all of the lizards and frogs from the science class my sophomore year, <laughs> it is better to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. <laughs> what did he do with them? He didn't do anything with them. He, this, this guy just had a bunch of lizards and frogs that he would like explain things about. Like we're learning about amphibians. This guy right here. This is a green toad, Southern Missouri, whatever the fuck. And he'd be like, oh, cool. And for no reason, he just stole them and let them go. <laughs> he just like just right outside the school. There's a little like patch of trees, and he's just like, what are you gonna do with those? I just thought I'd let him go. Go put the thing back. See what he says tomorrow. So it's like <laughs> just released all of his animals. Well, were they his uh, private animals or like school animals? I they were just there every day, so oh, I don't know. Like, okay, but it wasn't like he brought them in from home one day. Probably a little bit of both. You know, yeah, like, it could have like, been a mix, a mismatch. There was a couple frogs, and then like they didn't look like rare lizards, just, just like saying, under like, a heat the, lamp sitting there. Maybe the school probably paid for the animals, but you know, your teacher is the one who feeds them, takes care of them, technically yeah. owns them. Well, not no anymore. Idea. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Born free, <laughs> as free as the- I imagine him like letting them go and like singing that to himself, like run, little guys, run off, and, and then just go out in the road, get hit by a car or something. Yeah, there's absolutely. no telling what he released into the wild. Like, what if it was some sort of Norwegian gecko and it comes up in there and fucks all the Missouri geckos until they're extinct or something like yeah, that? Or there's a super gecko race that kills all the chameleons and now they're fucked. Or- Something. There you go. Yeah. Just like with those Asian carp that uh, that you see in the uh, the American uh, waterways now taking over. Those things that'll jump out of the water and fucking hit people in yeah. the, the head. The arowana thingies is like long blade looking things. I'm talking about Asian carp. Let me look um, it up. Let's oh, see I've if seen it's what I'm of the Asian of. carp. Here's what we need to do, Taylor. Like this would be epic. Get on one of those fucking speed boats, and they they put oh. it like an agitator in the water to really make the fish angry. Shotguns shotguns you fucking shoot them out of the air absolutely do that it would be so fun it would be so fun to do that just just you know angles of fire you shoot anything on the right side of the boat i'll shoot anything on the left side of the boat and just just standing on the front of the boat with helmets on you know (laughs) like a face guard and just blasting fish out of the air i want to do that so badly do that drinking heavily go half mile down (laughs) turn around and then just kind of with a net just scoop up all the the dismembered fish yeah have a big fish fry I would I would love to do that. Asian, that that's Asian carp look like regular carp mostly. Well, Apparently, carp is not good to eat, so we wouldn't want to do it with that. I don't know if I've told this on the show, but I used to like totally fuck off in gym, like didn't care. Like I I saved uh, in high school, like you had to take gym, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. and so many people were like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take my gym's freshman year, like to make it easy. Like I saved so many study halls, so many gyms, so many bullshit things for senior year, so that it would just be whatever. Like, and it ended up, everybody who didn't do that was like, God, Taylor, you had this shit figured out. I'm like, I know, I hit puberty at nine. Like, <laughs> I, I, I put these pieces together. Uh, but what I, I, there's a, I would forget my clothes all the time for gym. And so I would make a freshman give me their clothes. And of course, I was much, much bigger than them. And there was this one smaller <laughs> freshman. And I'd be like, Sam, forgot my shorts. Give me yours. And he's like, Taylor, I don't have any other shorts. Sam. Give me your shorts. You're such a like, bully. God. And then, then, then he'd give me his shorts. And uh, 
and I, I put these little tiny shorts on to like where Dick is almost hanging out what of my shorts. Wear? And then, and then Ted would have to wear jeans that day. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and so I'd put on the little shorts and like, you had to like run through the common area to get through the gym from that. And I would like take like big strides <laughs> in, in, in these little shorts with my ass almost hanging out. Like you almost see Dick and like, you can, you can, nothing's being hidden in these shorts. And I would just traipse in and start <laughs> stretching like big for, uh, for like kickball or something. And my, and the PE coach, like, he hated this for some reason. <laughs> oh, he would for be some like, reason. he'd be like, Taylor, are those your shorts? I'm like, yeah. He's like, says Sam on them. I'm like, ah, <laughs> my friends call me. You know, <laughs> like, Taylor, go put your own shorts on. It's like I forgot them. You know, and so, uh, man, after like the fifth or sixth time I did that, he, like, he like he actually pulled me into his gym man office and was like, Taylor, you can't keep taking shorts from the freshman. Just bring your clothes. <laughs> the just, first just and only time clothes. that conversation was had anywhere on this planet. It, it was, was like, but I never fully took like seriously what he said for like punishments or like anything, because it was Jim and it was like, I'm, I can play kickball, it's fucking fine. Like I can deal with the 10 points taken off for it's freaking freshmen give me their clothes. Uh, but he was a meat gazer. I think I have brought that up before too, right? No? So he, he would, uh, the way that our shower was set up is like, it was like a, just a big room with a bunch of shower heads. There were no dividers. It was just a big room with a bunch of shower heads and like fucking four of them worked well. So you had to get in there quick. And yeah, I think so that's you, pretty and, much and, every and, high school gym everywhere. Yeah. And everybody showered because it was morning PE and you don't want to smell like asshole all day. And like, as you were getting out of the shower in the hallway, like where your towels were hanging up, instead of him being like around the corner, like yelling, like. Boys, you know, hurry up, five minutes till class or whatever. He would be leaning up against the wall like this, watching us dry off. Taylor, to be fair, you only have that from when you were in class, and you just literally told us a story about how you used to steal the other kids' shorts. So he might have been watching to see what you were doing to them in the shower. <laughs> no, I think the only thing I ever did to them in the shower was make them. Uh, <laughs> Is there was a wild, thing you did uh, to them in the shower? I would forget leave to bring it, shampoo. It and so I would it. make them, there was a kid who had coconut milk shampoo and I, and he always, you know, yes. I would always get that from him and that was good. Another thing I did is I would take a, a chair, a plastic chair from out there and oh, I would yes. go, I would leave Jim like five minutes early. This made me laugh so hard every time. But, uh, and I was like the only, the only senior in the class. And so you get that seniority. And so I'd like run down to the locker room, like get naked, grab a plastic, one of those plastic blue chairs. That like that you they would sit even like the three slits in the back. I would yep. put it right in the middle of this shower room, aim every single shower at me, and then just sit there <laughs> in this chair. And then when like the freshman came in, I'd be like, I'm not done. And then I would sit there for like a few minutes until like eventually he would come around, you know, Mr. Meat Gazer, and see all these naked uh, you know, freshmen and sophomores and juniors or whatever standing in the corner, like, why does nobody shower? And like Taylor's got all the <laughs> <laughs> oh man Taylor, right, maybe you're a bad funny. person and i'll explain <laughs> <laughs> we taught my children we raised this and we're like look there are going to be times when you're in a position of power and it's your job to protect people smaller than weaker than you not to abuse them no one ever told you that i didn't take it to heart no oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> no but like it, it wasn't like a making people late like after a minute or two it's like you get up and of course it's a joke it's not like no nobody gets to shower because i'm in here give me your coconut milk shampoo you stole their clothes uh, if i was sam in shampoo. this position i would feel very abused no uh, this the reason sam that i liked it sam William. the reason i picked sam is because this kid i knew him like uh, he had a sibling that i was friends with and uh -huh. so it was always known as like a joke of like like he would never get in trouble oh. for it it was never like sam showed up in jeans and it was like, oh, Sam, you're getting marked off. It was always like, God damn it, Taylor fucking, Taylor's wearing teeny tiny shorts and you're wearing <laughs> jeans. I know what happened. And so then Sam would be laughing about it too. Like it was, okay, okay. It was more funny than other stuff. But uh, All right. But yeah, I, poor it, Sam. I bet, it, I bet yeah. Sam has, has some problem with this to this day. Yeah. Like he sees it. Oh, he, the, he hoards shorts now. Yeah, yes. No, so, no one fucking touches honey, his shorts. Honey, I need to off. wash your shorts. No! <laughs> there's a lock and a key on that and it's like a chest of fucking shorts yeah, some there. sort of levi based ptsd yeah. 
Yeah, he hears like little like sounds while he's in the shower, and he's like, <gasps> <laughs> "Oh, my coconut milk shampoo's still here." Okay, thank God. Maybe, right, maybe yeah. as an adult, now he has one of those car wash showers where he can put all the nozzles on himself <laughs> and sit there like the king that he always wanted to be. I hope he does have that now. I, I do think I want that. I do think the showers with like the two nozzles for like him, his, and her is fucking brilliant. Like Those I think are, that's like, I mean, you can have a shower together. Showering together is fun. It often leads to fun places. But you can also have all of the water for yourself all of the time, which yeah. is pretty fucking great. Yeah, I've got a lubricant dispenser in my shower. Really? No. <laughs> a, a friend of mine, not, I mean, more of an acquaintance, really, that I was in uh, <laughs> high school with, and he, you know. It, Everybody showered after every single sport because you get sweaty and, you know, you got that class isn't shit. You don't want to be that gross guy who all the girls are talking about smelling like B.O. And so everybody would shower. And, you know, there's an unavoidable thing when you shower. Kyle knows this from his prison days that you have to angle yourself toward the crowd of people because it's just a big chamber with a bunch of spigots. And you wash your hair like that, you know. Like you don't turn away. You got you to gotta have your eyes all over. I guess you had a little more privacy than that. So it stalls. Uh, there was this kid, Joe, that would just walk up to people. And this was not like one or two times. It made him laugh so hard to just wait until somebody turned around and was washing their hair like that. And he would run over behind him. This kid's like five foot one, little fatty. And he would go over there and he would start pissing on the back of people's uh, like calves and thighs <laughs> as he walked down. <laughs> and like, by the time they turn around, they're like, oh, what the fuck? And he'd just run away. He's just, he's a little goblin of a guy. He'd be like, <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. And I bet Woody agrees with me. Shout out to Joe from the shower. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call an ass whooping. Yeah, like, like, I was I, I, I don't, like, I'm thinking if this happens to me, how am I supposed to react to this guy? Right. Because I, I like to be honest, I'm like a three out of ten mad at that. I don't care that much if he's peeing on the you know below Dude. the ankle while I'm in the shower. On the other hand, I feel somewhat obligated to respond. Exactly. Uh, you know, like, that's like, the thing, right? It's not the act. It's the implied indignation. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. that everyone knows that you just urinated on me. I feel like I have to mm -hmm. do something to reclaim some well, he level of dignity. Yeah, he, he wasn't was, retarded. So basically what he would do is... Wait, now, now would, are, we, are we talking about retardedness? Or are we talking about like a silly silly guy? He's saying no, no, I'm, he I'm wasn't saying he being wasn't dumb. wasn't yeah. retarded. He wasn't being dumb. He, That's like, an he ass was, whooping. He was my age. Like, we were, I guess we were like, if we were seniors at the time, whatever. And... He was much, much smaller than even a lot of the freshmen, but he wasn't going up to me or other seniors. He was going up to vulnerable freshmen or sophomores, and then he would revel in the laughs of the larger people. P and then it, yeah, it was a bit of P, you know, it's not as funny looking back. Yeah, I don't like this guy. I don't like this guy. Like, imagine this, right? Any consolation, his life is not going great. And I think I know his kink. But if I was in the shower and someone hawked up a loogie and spat it in the center of my chest, I'm in the shower. It's comparable to the other offense. It's like a three out of ten. But I feel like like it's the disrespect. I'm not okay with someone treating me like that. I feel I feel obligated to to equalize our relationship again. Mm -hmm. Beat the shit out of him naked? Yeah. No, well, I'm more of a wrestler. No. But yeah. No, I'm <laughs> gonna wait until no, see, that's the thing. I'm gonna pretend like I don't care. Mm. And I'm gonna I'm gonna finish I'm gonna rinse off and I'm gonna go mm. get dressed. Mm. And you're gonna come out naked and I'm gonna beat the fucking shit out of you. I'm gonna <laughs> sucker yeah. punch you right away. I, like, 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 you're not gonna know what's coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's not gonna be a whole like, hey, you did this to me, and let's shove each other three times each, and then let's point. No. I'm immediately going to deck you. I'm going to hit mm. you as hard as I fucking can right here and try to knock you unconscious. And then I'm going to kick you a lot. And as I kick you, I'm going to explain to the people who are watching why I'm, why, why I just did all of this. Do you, you have a three and a half inch dick hard? <laughs> well then why don't you try fucking a bottle of this sign in holy water? Your dick will get so big it'll get stuck in the bottle so pull it out quick. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord, I feel the dick growing energy inside. The Lord, your God, Jesus Christ, had the biggest penis the world has ever seen. <laughs> Your dick would get stuck in the bottle if it worked. <laughs> You'd have a real problem that's, on I your head. I didn't know it worked. Well, that's, the, that's, that's part of the joke. <laughs> that's right. That's right.
I want to keep doing pasta voice. <laughs> oh, your dick will be so big and your nipples so tiny. You won't believe your eyes. Does your old bitch have some big ass nipples? Put your hand up. Put your hand up if your bitch has a big ass nipples. I see a lot of hands. I see a lot of hands in the house tonight. You want some Dissane Holy Water? Get those nipples little. <laughs> Say, Lord, give me those little nipples. Lord, Lord give, me, give, me, give me, me those little nipples. <laughs> give it to me, Lord. <laughs> Any bitty nipples, any bitty nipples, <laughs> give them to me low. Ghost nipples, any bitty ghost nipples. Woo! <laughs> ghost nipples in the house, Lord, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. No, ghosts. these are holy ghost nipples. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so dumb. I don't care if it hurts your feelings. <laughs> Let's get Woody's dad on the show <laughs> about our interpretation of this epistemology. I had a bunch of trees in my yard removed because they were dying and like rotting. And these people destroyed my yard. It's as though I paid for a tree removal and lawn destruction service. Like, I. <laughs> So like, <laughs> yeah, and they're the best at f***ing biz, let me tell you, <laughs> because they uh, basically in my backyard, uh, I live in a wooded area, tons of trees. We really focus and mostly on the yard destruction. <laughs> we, we focus your, mostly on ruining your yard. Is and your backyard your, nice? Uh, my backyard <laughs> is still is way less nice than it was after they wrecked it. It's my uh, front yard uh, that I'm pissed about. This. The grass. Is it grass or weeds cut to the same height? No, it's it was, it was grass. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you I say grass. I said was grass. Yeah. So basically, it was six trees that I needed removed in my backyard because they were all either dying or rotted or just like looming over my house and making me anxious. And so I figured, okay. you know, just let's rip the bandaid off because trees are expensive. All six of them down. You know, oh. I'll, I'll either have guess to do how much. It. Yes, you can, and I'll surprise you with it. All right, and you want me to uh, guess now or yes, guess now. Six trees. Yep. Uh, like 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 big trees. Like uh, the, the the smallest of them were probably that big around. Did he the go? Largest, did, he, did he have to go up and climb the trees with? Oh yeah, on all six of them. Dude, did that cost you three thousand dollars? Cost me forty nine hundred. Okay, That's and. Rough. And I guess it's more expensive sometimes. Like oh. they charge you more depending on how much it's like, how close it is to your house or whatever. It's so a couple of them were like right. It was eight hundred for me for one. So I, I was I was hoping you got the like bulk discount. <laughs> that, that dude, that was the bulk discount. <laughs> that's <just cheap. laughs> Holy because shit, I, that's the math. Forty eight hundred. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was the that was the big because the guy oh. like this is the one part that was decent is when I was calling around about it in my head I'm like fuck it it's gonna be ten grand and when I called him in December the dude was like. Yeah, nobody gets trees removed in December, so I'm just trying to keep my crews working, you know, because no, you know, I, so here, you'll get a super cheap price. And I was like, all right, that, that works for me. And they come and they start removing the trees. He tells me it's going to be a one day process. I'm no genius, but I was even in the moment like, what are you bring in like 50 people to my house to like just like all at once? Like, you're, like no, this is going to take longer than that. And so he comes on a on like a Thursday a few weeks ago. And they start doing their their shit. And the next day, it was obviously Friday, they come back to start again. And all they did the first time was really kind of get set up and like tie stuff around the trees, like to kind of like look at the leverage points and whatnot. Then nothing had started. And that Friday, I was leaving town to go to my grandparents. And so as I'm leaving, there's like getting a bunch of work done, like sawing the trees and everything. And I'm already noticing like my yard looks like shit. Like, they drove through it with the mm. uh so my yard you could you know how there's a straight line from the road through your side yard for every house in existence you know how you could if you want to walk from the the front left portion to the backyard of a house you would walk straight past the left back left side of the house just straight you know if you wanted to walk past the right back side of a house what they did is they set up their machine and drove across my yard. Their machine started on the left side of my house and then ambled up next to my goddamn mailbox. And this is like a and private then, company. It's not like from the city or no, anything like no. that. This is a this nah, is supposedly a decent right, company. Bro. They drove across my entire yard in wet weather. 
And then I guess they didn't like that route. And in that route, they destroyed a swath eight feet by the entire length of the entire yard. That's mud destroyed. And then that's I guess like, that approach wasn't working because while I was, while, I know. And while I was out of town, I guess they didn't like that route on day two for Saturday because the next day they took it right to the right side of my house and they drove a whole new path through my yard and they didn't put boards down and it was Aww. wet. And I got home Sunday and <laughs> I, I laughed when I saw my house. I went, would I? <laughs> because it's, They've done. They've destroyed my yard. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Destroyed. That's a it's crazy, raining all the time. crazy thing There's to do. Let me ask you this. All let me ask you this. And let me, let me, wait, real quick. When I got back on Sunday, I'm getting back from my grandparents' house. I just wanted to relax and play oh, Age of Empires 2 all day. I'm full of steak. I've got some, some other steak she sent me home with. I just want to play Age of Empires <laughs> 2 and get stoned and eat more steak. And I try and log on to the internet. I have no internet. These no, guys now dug got so deep into my yard without the board, with the tracks on their machine, that they physically severed my internet line. It didn't unplug it. It didn't misalign it. They drove so deep through my yard, they severed my fucking internet That's line. That's fucking crazy. And Honestly, these fucking I would fucking, I would fucking eat their children. Oh, praise be dude, to Allah. They, this, this guy, <laughs> they, they, <laughs> praise be to Allah. Fuck it, these love guys, me. They, they came back yesterday because <laughs> the guy told i knew something was amiss Quite because good. on the friday Quite after i left the, the a lady amiss. from the company You're called like lawns me torn and up was like, like something's amiss <laughs> hey uh, i there's a bunch of stuff with your yard we're gonna take care of it and i was like at my grandparents i'm like okay so it's even worse than it was when i left they came back yesterday the the owner or manager of the company he wasn't there yesterday. I wonder fucking why. I wonder why he didn't want to fucking talk to me. And he sends his like goons, the workers, and they throw down some straw haphazardly. And then they come to my front door and he's like wanting me to inspect it and like pay him $5,000. And I was like, I get it. Like you guys are just doing your job, but this is in like, and I'm, I'm I always keep it like calm. Like I'm not someone to like freak sure, out. And, you can't, yeah, I'm yeah, always you very calm move. about that uh, stuff. Yeah. And I was like, honestly, like this is unacceptable. Uh, I know all the, all the four of you guys here, if you guys, uh, if you at your home hired someone to remove a tree and they did this to your yard, I can't imagine what you guys would be thinking. And that's what I'm thinking right now. So Bro, if you need to tell your boss, you know, I'm, and I told him, I'm like, I'm not going to give you guys a dime until my yard is returned to the way it was before, because this is absurd. I'm going to be getting fines for my HOA. Oh, no. Like, do you have any idea how horrid this is? Like, you Elon guys Musk done? is trying to ruin my life. Oh, my Elon Musk is trying scene, to ruin my he life. He will fucking yeah. kill me. And so my yard, I can send you a photo after the show. My yard is fucking destroyed. Ruined. Yeah. It Dude. took me so oh, long no. to get grass growing well in my yard know, because the previous yeah. owners treated the yard like shit. And so I had to like reseed so many times and I took Bro, the aerator out. Now there that I so have a times. house, I oh, understand you took the this. Yo, no, this is years ago I when I had to originally oh, get the grass? yard going. Because oh. of this fucking weather, I had a pretty severe pipe burst in my basement and flooded my whole basement. Bunch of fucking disaster. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a good bit, good bit of time to fix and everything. The last couple of days, people have been tearing stuff out and carrying it. Everybody was removing a bunch of drywall. They're moving an entire ceiling from a room like down there. And like they plugged in like 12 industrial strength dehumidifiers. And like even in my head, I am not an electrician. Like I walked down there and saw and I'm like, this is dangerous. Like there should not be like nine of these to an outlet. And like maybe with like as I'm thinking that it bursts a circuit and shuts down. They've just left. And so then I have to go and I don't know anything about that. And I'm fucking around with the breakers and like trying to run on cords and stuff down there. I have to leave those right. It is. I, it sounds like an airplane's taking off underneath me right now. It is so goddamn. They're running right now. Closed. They're running right now. They it's have been to run two days. From, yeah, it's been oh, two days. A guy came out and checked today and was like, the moisture meter is way too high. We got to keep them running. And so it'll be like 72 hours at the time yep. tomorrow they come to check. It is so fucking loud in my house. It is it, 12 <laughs> of these. And the, the way it is, you know, my stairs just go down into the couple basement rooms I have. And I can't close those doors. I have to leave them open for some air circulation thing. Can I interrupt you? Did we yeah. set this up or am I crazy? Do, do people know the pipe burst in your basement two days ago? Did we say that out loud? I, yeah. I said that to, to begin. Yeah. The, oh, just okay. that it, it burst. Basically, uh, 
the guy just showed me a picture of the pipe and was like, ah, here's the problem. And it was like a pipe totally shorn in two, just pouring stuff. And uh, so I, I, I think it had only been going for a couple hours when I caught it, thank God. But a couple hours is horrible because it's enough time to ruin it's, everything. But it was- it's a couple thousand gallons at that point. Like, like, like oh, yeah. I've dealt with this so many times. Like, like my dad's farm, like... It's been stressing me out, dude. I'm sorry. My dad's farm in those poultry houses, there's like... I don't want to exaggerate, so let me quickly do the math in my head. It's 5, 10, 15, 20 times 6, um, 500, 2,000, 6, 6 times 2,000 is 12,000. Everyone's um, being very respectful. It's two and a that. half miles of PVC, okay? There's two and a half miles of indoor wow. PVC. Okay. And a lot of it is CPVC, and I'm not going to get into the details of the difference, but it gets brittle over time. And so, like, that shit will just, like, snap and break. And there's always, like, strangers in there working who, who are, like, rough with your equipment that are hired. That it, it, I won't go into it, but there's people in there fucking working who don't give a fuck if they break something. And you never know if they've cracked a thing. And it's just almost about to fall apart. And then, like, three weeks later, pop. And so, so many floods I've seen in, in, indoors. Like, this like is the first tens, Like, 10,000 gallons. And it sucks that it was in my fucking house, but like it, like just by happenstance at like 2 PM, I happened to be like, Oh, I'm going to check downstairs. If I have something, I went down there and I'm in my unfinished area. I open it and there's just water fucking all over the place, not covered because it's a very, very large unfinished area, but it's like, there's enough water in the lower leveling parts that I could go splash around. Like if I wanted to, and like, you know, where like you kick a really deep puddle and like you feel the amount of inertia of the water you're moving. It's spilling over the sides of your boot too. Like it's that kind of amount, not good. And I'm like, ah, well, this is, this is bad news. And so I, I go to the finished part of my basement and I'm like, hopefully, you know, the finished part that has, you know, drywall and fucking my TV and my pool table, my sectional, all my shit, maybe that's okay. And I walk in and it's like, you ever seen the movie like the money trap where like it, it looked like there was there was water pouring out of all the light fixtures there was a center like uh there was a center area where like the the vent was to like heat it and like it was just one of the pouring out of that and i just was like oh sprinted turn around turn the water off run up stra- stairs grab a bunch of buckets start putting it under all of these light fixtures i call around uh to five or six different plumbing emergency companies it's minus four degrees in St. Louis at the time. And so every one of them is like, yeah, we don't have any plumbers. Everybody's doing exactly what you're calling to do. Eventually I get through to someone and they come out and start getting moving. But like, it was, uh, it, it's going to take so much fucking time for them to fix all this shit. Just a pain in the ass. So what if at least you have insurance yeah. though. Can you imagine yeah, if this weren't insured? Cause I, I don't know if they've given you an estimate, but I just based on what you've described, I think you've got like, Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars worth of damages. I, I would guess at least like probably around fifteen. I and want so, a yeah. Twitch donation a goal hit. where you're willing to walk downstairs and show off the damage. <laughs> you should do yeah, that for a thousand dollars. For a thousand dollars, I will go downstairs with my laptop and I will show everything. Did I? Oh, some someone would like be like uh, using the the floor plan of his house. Here's his address. So, exactly. Right. Oh, right, right. That. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. would, uh, that is a risk. So the way I would infiltrate Taylor's home for murder is <laughs> all right. Yeah. I do see the flaws in these. You can ideas. see here once you get him in this pool room, there's no escape. There's no escape. <laughs> okay. One way in, one way out. Classic, <laughs> classic flaw. It would go yeah. towards the deductible though. I, I had never seen like that level of damage so fast. Where like with it felt it felt like the time from me turning off the water, running upstairs, grabbing the buckets, and then coming back down, like pieces of the fe- ceiling, it just started like just bowing out at the, the areas where they put the drywall together or the ceiling together, whatever. So Fucking pain in the ass. You've said yeah, that I, your house is very loud. And I, in my head, all the humidifiers are in the basement. Am I right? Yeah, so I, I, I live in a ranch style house. So mm-hmm. like large upper floor and then basement. There's not two stories. And so like- Over on Wilk it, Street. Yeah, <laughs> on Wilk, on Wilk Street. In St. Louis. And uh, so basically, like, my, my living room, you come into my house, it's an open, like, feel to it. And, you, you know, you go down the stairs, and immediately a left, you're in my finished area. Right, you're in my gym, unfinished area where I have my hockey shooting stuff. Now, because it's just an open stairway down there, and both those doors have to be open, and in each of those rooms, there's six industrial-sized dehumidifiers, 
I, I can hear it right now. I can hear the thrall, the right now through the wall, through the doors, down the stairs. You, I, I can. I was sitting with my 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 ex girlfriend on the couch last night trying to. Watch <laughs> I love something. that. Yeah, we were trying to watch something, and she was like, "I can't handle this. It is so loud in here." And and something else that it did, it's dehumidifying the whole house. So I got a nosebleed this morning. Wow, it's, just, it's so dry in here. And it's still not doing anything. Uh, all my carpet was destroyed. There was one area of my carpet that like matched my stairs. And I was like, do you think we'll be able to save this like bottom patch so I don't have to try and match carpet? And the guy's like, I'll do my best, bro. And then the guy came out today and I asked him about it and was like, there is, I don't know who told you this was salvageable. Uh, probably the guy who comes on day one and gets your hopes up. <laughs> I'm day two guy. I'm real deal guy. I'm oh, that was High you. Hopes Harry. He probably <laughs> told you you weren't going to need new new walls, too, didn't he? <laughs> I, I, had, I, had, I had like a big St. Louis Blues fat head that I put up two weeks ago that my dad got me for Christmas. Like, I'll, fi- I'll finally put that up by the pool table. And like the guy was like cutting out all the pieces of drywall and he like leaves that up there. And he's like, we'll see if we can, we'll see if we can salvage this. And I'm like, I'm like, what are you? T- it's it's done. It's done. Like, what is a fat head? Like, so it's like a big like St. Louis Blues logo that sticks there on the wall, or you can get them of different sports teams. They look yeah, nice. Every up sports team. It's room. a big every sticker you put on a wall. Big giant sticker. Yeah, that, yeah. that goes on the wall. Usually They're in super like a, popular. Yeah, yeah, very popular. And just the way this guy was like sawing around it. And it's like, dude. It, first Correct. of all, if I think I'm pretty sure if I have to peel this off, I have to throw it away anyway. Second of all. It, that fat head is not going to provide the structural support needed to keep this wall in place. Like just so I, I have the this side of ripping it all out and replace it is what I say. I have this thing, Taylor, like my welder has a very loud sound to it. I bet it's not too far from the humidifier and it just increases my stress level. Like it, it I don't, everything about it running makes me like, I don't Anxiety is not the right term, but it's just, it, it weighs on me. I hate it. And the second I flip that switch off, it's like, it's relaxation. Yeah. yeah. Does that ha- hey, are those humidifiers I'm, doing that to you? They're are stressing you- me out, man. Yeah. They, they are so goddamn loud. I could hear them when I was trying to sleep last night. It's it it is. It's like you're, it's like the sound of a jet beginning to turn on. Just <laughs> down there, I can fucking hear it. And I'm gonna go out and try and watch an episode of The Expanse after this, and I won't be able to focus because I'll be annoyed, and then I'll overeat. <laughs> uh, you guys yeah, i had the exact same thing happen my, my basement flooded and the the all of the flooring had to be ripped up it was like five i don't even remember how much the flooring cost to begin with but it was hardwood flooring it was if you watch the the f the boot camp i did with wings that that hardwood floor that he's being like pulled that w- he's pulling jeremy across like that all had to be taken up and that w- that hardwood was glued down to concrete so like (laughs) these guys had to run like these giant like scrapers to like get under it and then prize it up and every time they prize the boards would just splinter into all these they they would they wouldn't come up in like even sheets because like they were so glued Mm -hmm. down they were just splintering up it it was thousands of dollars just to get that done and then running the dehumidifier for a long time like a whole week and I'd go down there like every couple of hours and dump out, you know, three or four gallons of water. It was just shocking how fast it yeah. was pulling moisture out of the air. Yeah, well, I believe they're drying it out, but like even like the area of carpet, it's dried out. Now it's just like crispy and rotten. Yeah, like, it's ruined. It's not, yeah, it, it's destroyed. So, so do you have an ETA on how much longer they're going to run? Uh, the guy who came out today was like, we're going to run it at least until tomorrow afternoon. And oh, so like, okay. it's not forever like that. No, it, at that point, it'll just be like three straight days of it, which is annoying. But I've spent a lot of time in both. And like I in Colorado, when I'm like in the shower and I like blow my nose or whatever, there'll be like a tiny bit of blood. Mm-hmm. But like in in Vegas, it's like, oh, God. Oh, did I just have a period out of my fucking skull? <laughs> oh, just Dude, every I blew time. so much blood out of my nose this morning living in this arid house from these 12 dehumidifiers sucking all the moisture out of my entire home fucking i'm so tired of this it's so loud it's so loud in here when i was trying to like <laughs> fix stuff i like walked out to grab another water earlier when i got booted from the show because discord stopped working and just greeted i opened that door and it's the entire fucking floor of the house 
It's God, so stressful, Taylor. I think you're going to have to postpone your wedding. It's I just, think I'm going to have to. You don't want to get started in a wet house. This is a bad foundation for a future. Let's just push it back a couple years. Just to <laughs> win it back until this room is finished I and I have it. my dream house. Yeah. <laughs> Let's wait till um, every is mine. Make your ex girlfriend your girlfriend again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make some hats <laughs> you know like i hate to be like a debbie downer here but whatever it takes for you to hide this water damage from the next person who purchases that home you should get that done like if it costs a little if they're like yeah we your insurance covers this this and that i mean you'll be able to tell that this got a little wet ah, ah, ah. no 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 we are covering up a crime scene here all right <laughs> no one should ever know that these boards were moist right like yeah. like whenever i sold my last house and we had had like a flood on the first on the like main floor that came down into the basement mm -hmm. i was like we got to get this fixed all the drywall fixed like yeah. like 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 no 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 you can't leave that exposed on the corner and they were like well this is where your hot water heater is nobody's going to ever see the edge of this drywall i'm like fix it everything has to be covered 100% like like a home inspector needs mm -hmm. to come here and have no idea that this ever fucking happened. Well, like, I'm erring like, on the side of just having them tear absolutely everything out because even the stuff they were trying to salvage with the dehumidifiers, it's like I don't trust that that actually did enough to 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 de demoisten the inside of that drywall. Wood and is like, fine. Drywall you cannot trust dude, and a bunch of, of my mold. insulation a bunch of my insulation got fucked and apparently when insulation gets nope. wet it's like there's no you, you you just have to get rid of that and replace it insulation drywall um particle board uh the oh, only thing that's carpet carpet anything soft that's all gotta go fucking two by sixes pressure treated lumber that's fine that's you're not the, throwing the that back in. like you know like the skirt kind of area on the back of a like the corner part of a sectional couch yeah like in that back corner, like that, whole, like I was mostly just feeling initially, like just the tops to see like no, nothing had dripped on them from the ceiling. And that was mostly okay. But then like, as they moved them around, like that whole back area near the corner where it was the worst is just fucking waterlogged. And I, I really hope that that's salvageable because I liked, I like that fucking sectional, but it, we'll see. God damn it. It's always fucking something, man. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that fucking sucks. I, I wonder if, Registry. I wonder if like it's something that the previous home inspector missed and therefore would be liable for because uh, I think that that is it's probably come and gone any without getting into usually there's like a year or two like 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 without getting into specifics I know someone whose home inspector missed a leaky roof and uh, they purchased the home and not, and then the roof leaked and it stained the drywall and, and, and the roof on the interior like with the ceilings like stained mm -hmm. and they had to cover all of that like like they it was i have like, no idea who even inspected my house before i bought it you've got the paperwork i bet it's all in a shoe box somewhere yeah it's it's over it's in that folder box somewhere yeah it's like, right there where yeah let me go grab it you guys can look yeah <laughs> now you can see here's section three what's that dude like you've got a wife now. That's that's her job. Like, Honey, I need my documents. I need <laughs> home inspection contract right now. That's their that's woman's Olympics is filing paperwork and producing <laughs> paperwork as quickly as possible. That's what uh, I can't wait to have her take full control of. I don't want to deal with all these I papers. I've got I've got big ideas. Things are cooking. I can't deal with the little pitter patter of daily life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you take care of it. None of this is true. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when Woody leaves and Chiz and Kyle this is horse shit this is just my podcast now I would do things differently if I ran things around here oh you bet your ass I would gotta be quiet now though boss is Jesus, coming back where did everybody go <laughs> yeah. this, was from, uh, this was from high school where I went to one of this girls it was such like a high school way for it to happen This one of this girls friends came to me and was like hey so-and-so thinks you're cute and wants you to, to ask her out and take her on a date or something. And I was like, all right, well, I'm 16 now. Now it finally makes sense because I can actually drive somewhere and get someone. Because I was never about it before I could drive where it was like, hey, me and my mom will get you at eight. Where it's, it's just <laughs> uncomfortable. And so, so I went same, and did that. I showed up at this dude's, uh, this lady. This oh! Oh, this the dude's dude, house. Tell this, me more. This, this <laughs> <dude's>, <laughs> uh, no, I went to the to her house and this dude opened the door who was 
way too young to be her dad. And it turns out that her stepdad, I guess, where it was one of those stepdad situations where his mom like really hunted down the <laughs> age ladder. And so her, her stepdad was like 31 at the time. And I was like 16 and he was a bodybuilder. And was trying to give off this vibe of like, you don't fuck with her, you know, don't be, don't be getting out of my way. And I was almost sitting there like, this is too cliche that this is a bodybuilder guy on a first <laughs> date with chick. And uh, basically we just sat around while he watched us for a while. Then we went to go get in the hot tub where he also watched us from inside oh, on the couch. God. And I just left. It was awful. I told her I was going to take her to Red Robin and then I just left. I was like, this is going to go anywhere. This fucking weirdo with giant bicycle veins or bicep veins are I, not a it. I've never had yeah. to deal with someone who's six foot seven who does that. Thankfully, the only time I've had to do it, it was for one of my smaller friends who's probably like like five eight, five nine at the absolute most. Very skinny yeah. also, small guy. And this was back in, I think it was over some kind of break, our freshman year in college. And we were back in St. Louis, and we went to a buddy of ours, uh, his house. And his house is, like, the backyard is, like, the little patio area, and then a giant hill down, <clears throat> like, just grass, yes. just straight down. So it's slick, and it had rained earlier that day. And my my skinny buddy never drank. Like, he had not, he drank, I think, twice in his life up to that point. And we're like, dude, we're going to get you fucked up tonight. We're going to have a great time. And so me and like five buddies head out, head out to this this uh, this party. And we get there. And I was I was sober driving that night. And so I, I couldn't have anything to drink. And uh, we we get down there. My I, I keep like basically like vicariously drinking through my buddy who doesn't know how to drink. Oh or all the time, I'm just like, hell yeah, dude. Like, I can't take the shot, but you take mine and that, that kind of shit. And after like shit you not like 35 minutes at the party like he is beyond blackout like not making sense like we were playing pool at one point and he was just like holding the cue like leaning all over yeah. the place like not not even able to play and and so we have to leave pretty fucking early so i grabbed my buddies that i came there with it's like uh i was in i had a jeep at the time and so i had myself uh three buddies and then this the skinny guy and we're all leaving and as we're gonna leave i'm helping my my skinny buddy out the door and he gives me the drunk guy shake of like get off of me i i can walk yeah. myself immediately falls down the hill and rolls barrel roll style <laughs> like like 30 yards down there 30 yards doesn't sound like a lot it's a lot on wet grass in tennis shoes having to go down there. And so I go down there and I'm like, Hey, That's you're good buddy. You, you fucking got it. Like I'm giving like the pump up drunk speech where it's like, dude, you feel bad right now. You're going to be fine in an hour. You're going to be, he was not going to be fine in an hour. You'll be fine in an hour. Just come on, stand up. Let's get up there. Let's go. I'll, I'll <clears> stop <throat> and we'll get food on the way home. And he just was like, Man. and so <laughs> I was like, okay, fuck. And so I, I picked him up potato sack style and I carried him up there. It took me probably 10, 12 minutes to get up there. Cause I would get up. And then I would feel like with both my legs totally still like the traction give out. And I just would slide back like five feet, yeah. trying not to fall with this fucker on my shoulder. I eventually get him back up to my car. We could throw everybody in the back. And immediately my other buddy who's sitting next to him in the middle goes, dude, he be dude, you better not fucking vomit on me. You better not fucking vomit on me. And I'm like, dude, honestly, honestly, please don't throw up in my car. He's <laughs> not nonsensible like nonsensical we get like two miles down the road there's a cvs and maybe 200 yards before we get to the cvs uh i hear a <laughs> in my back seat oh. and then like there's a two second delay and my, my other buddy who was still drunk but not that fucked up goes oh fucking gross dude fucking gross what the fuck is he's screaming at this guy and then we i, I pull into the cvs so i can get you to clean it up and me and the two other most sober guys who wasn't the yeller or the vomiter get up and start going inside. And the the guy who got vomited on was so frustrated, he pushed the drunk guy into the door. But I was already out of the car. And so I was going to open it up to give him some air. I open up the door and he falls headfirst into the concrete in a CVS parking lot. There's a guy walking in. It's two in the morning. I don't know what the fuck he was getting. And he just like, rough night. And I was like, <laughs> He piece of shit. So I went in and spent like four. Yeah, like you like had to shit. comment on that. He had like yeah, he had blood on his head. Oh, Jesus, because he he hit the the concrete so hard. I didn't know he was gonna <clears> fall <throat> out. I thought he was on like the middle of the car, but no, he fell right out. And uh, he, I don't think he drank again for like a year after that. 
So we really ruined it. He's never going to be an alcoholic. So there's that. So, you know, so thank God for small mirrors. The story mirrors. is that you saved this guy. Well, it was you more the funny from himself. The funny journey. If anything, I harmed him by trying to get him to drink <laughs> too much at the party. I was trying for him to get him to have a really, really fun time because he was a buddy of mine from high school, had to move yeah. away in like freshman year and live in this tiny little town because his dad was a pastor. And so like when he finally was back and we were all hanging out, it was like, fuck yeah, let's get let's get shit house. So in college, if you if you join a fraternity, I didn't, but I had a lot of friends who did. You have to carry around with you when you're pledging or rushing, basically a little bag full of all these like necessities that at any point an active brother can be like, hey, lighter. And one of the pledges, if they don't have a lighter available or if they don't have a condom available or they don't have a cigarette available or whatever, they'll get in trouble and they'll have to do extra hazing or whatever. And so one of the things that one of my buddies had to do, it was two of them actually because they were both pledging the same fraternity freshman year. And they had to have cigarettes, condoms, a lighter, and they had to have uh, a pocket pussy <laughs> that could be demanded from them from any active brother at any time. And so there was one sex shop that I knew of in Columbia in, at Mizzou. And so a ton of guys had to go there and buy like these. And it was the only one was like, you know, bring back a pocket pussy. And so all of them were going and being like, all right, where's the cheapest one? Boom. Got it. Like grabbing it and bring it back. And went off without a hitch like this isn't like a one-day thing you just have to have these things available and as a joke <laughs> apparently i wasn't there this is at the house uh one of my buddies was asked hey give me your pocket pussy because they'll just try and catch you because make him be like oh i don't have it and they're like oh 50 push-ups or whatever it is and gave it to him and the guy goes this sucks you're gonna take this back tell him it was too big and you're gonna get me a nicer one and so this other guy had to go back to the store and return it with his brother there, making sure he said it, like in the background, like doing some perusing. Because they'd have to say, this was too big. I need a smaller, nicer one. And then <laughs> had to pick one out and give it to that guy. It was just a, a funny little humiliation bonding thing. So How wonderful. So there you go. Yeah. And who said, like, it's better than like the 80s, where like getting initiated was like getting paddle the bunch. Just, or, you were the pocket pussy in the 80s. It's like, all yeah. right, bend over. It's time. <laughs> like, Going like, on elephant walks or, or whatever you got to do. I, I, I talked to um, my friend. Now, this is the 90s. And you know, I was like, dude, what do they make you do? What do they make you do? Can't talk about it. Can't. Eventually, because he's my high school friend and we were close, he's like, all right, well, pretty much every sorority makes you fuck and every fraternity makes you jerk off. That's what you do. See, that's the thing I've heard in the past, and I know they don't do that anymore for the most part because they get in way more trouble. Mm. But, yeah, there used to be a lot more more crazy stuff, like having to wear burlap underwear for a week. Oh, or, no. <laughs> you know, like, uh, drive you into the middle of a cornfield, because I'm in Missouri, like drive you in the middle of a cornfield blindfolded in burlap underwear and leave you there and be like, best of luck getting back. And then, like, just, just stuff like that. Oh, fuck mm. all that. But that was like, yeah, I'm with Kyle. Or shit, there's no. <laughs> what kind of club do they have? Like, 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 do we just get to fuck like, 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 like girls all day and like, like rolling money? Is that your club? No, <laughs> we just, we just eat pizza, drink beer, and sleep in the smallest bed you've ever seen. Fuck your club. Fuck your club. Fuck your fucking. Sometimes club. fraternities have cooler like houses. Like you know, it's like you can say in the dorm that every jackass yeah. stays in, or you could be in the party house. You know, when you go there and there's like two people to a room still, but they're lofts and they're cooler and. Uh, yeah, I, I could see the appeal of living at that place. Uh, suffer through one year and live off campus, right? Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> if that's what you want. But I, me, I want to live off, on campus and not be in a frat. That's my college experience I, that, I, that I would want. Um, the downside of being in a frat is I feel like it's, it's high school again. You have this big school where you can be anyone you want. And then you shrink it to just the frat community. And now it's he said, she said, and drama and... Man, this isn't really hard at all. Also, Connect Four, losing badly at Connect Four. You all, I played with my girlfriend uh, at like one of those giant ones at a bar uh -huh. a couple nights ago, and we were like dropping the big plastic discs in, and she won in four moves, and I had to. Wait. Like... <laughs> so you just set up a ramp for her with your three moves? 
Yeah, I just was like <laughs> half not paying attention and half just not being that smart and just <laughs> and just messing it up. And then I have to be like, actually, I'm just bored by this. Let's go. Uh, let's go play darts instead of because <laughs> you can't admit you're Why actually can't you? dating, she you're dating a it. retarded person. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, yeah, lo- losing in four moves in Connect Four. That's, oh, <laughs> that's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, but I'm thinking about what your three moves had to be, right? Like, she put one down, you put the, the block so she could go above it. And then you put two blocks so that she could, you know, do... I'm, I'm assuming she won angular, but that's not necessarily true. Uh, I think it was just flat. <laughs> I think it was just flat. I'm not, I'm not going to pump my own tires on that, but yeah, it was... <laughs> Tre- tremendously dumb. I hope there were a lot of spectators on that. <laughs> makes it better. <laughs> like yeah, the whole part. We alone in there. Who's you know? this retard? <laughs> yeah, this is, <laughs> that's so nice of her to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. It was kind of impolite of her to take advantage of him like that. The guy's clearly that, handicapped. That Beating that retarded man <laughs> the connect four. In four moves. God, look at the size of that guy's head. Wow. <laughs> a head that big with can... nothing inside. <laughs> uh, sorry, look at those enormous <laughs> candies you buy. It's just a shell. I wonder if his ears fart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like this reminded me of a, a haircut. St- Did you guys ever get your hair cut by your mom when you were yes. growing up? Yeah. So wow. I had to do that a couple times. And usually it was just a bloodbath i looked like an a real ass like you have to get a really bad haircut for someone in third grade up here <laughs> to say something's wrong with your hair but that's achievable when like you cut it this high and it's like that's not a natural end for hair on the back of a child's head you look like so, a goddamn alien <laughs> yeah you look like it's just it's, you're wearing a, a baseball cap of hair without the bill like that's the, the amount of headspace covering but uh one time my mom Bill's actually nailed talk. it yeah, one time my mom got me pretty good with a, a decent haircut, and I went uh, to school. Uh, the the guy across the street drove me to school because he was much older, and he's like, oh, you're looking pretty sharp there. And I was like eight, so I'm like, thanks, thanks, man, and went to school, came back, and I told my mom. My mom was like, oh, they thought your hair looked nice, didn't they? And they were our neighbors, and so my mom invited the three of them who were all like, they're probably all like in their late 30s now. They're much older than me, and they... They came over and, to get haircuts from my mom because my mom was like, I'm really figuring it out with Taylor. Like, I'll give it to you for free. And she gave the first guy a haircut. Really not great. I'm standing there in the garage watching because I'm eight and have nothing to do. Uh, the second guy, it's just – it's a slight bit better, you know. So maybe the third guy got a little bit of confidence. And then him, my mom just, like, started to feel like she was the the queen of a salon. Just like, boom, 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 yeah, like going so quick. And she caught – that ridge on the back of where your ear is with some clippers on the third guy and i swear to god i didn't know this area could bleed so much like she (laughs) she like raked it with the clippers without a guard on it and just punctured the back of the ear and this this i guess at the time like 16 year old kid just had blood pouring down the back of his neck (laughs) in the middle of our garage and uh, she didn't cut my hair anymore after that so it was a net win (laughs) good thing you might be one ear taylor (laughs) <laughs> I might be. Yeah, that'd be even more comfortable. Make my head look smaller. So. <laughs> I know Woody has asked before, like, hey, guys, go go rate the podcast on iTunes because it helps us out and it helps the show and everything. And that's definitely true. A couple of days ago, someone I work with who is like, like probably early 60s or something, <laughs> okay. was like, like something came up and they're like, oh, and you you do your podcast, like at the end of a meeting kind of thing. And they were like, can you do that podcast thing? I was like, yeah, yeah, I do the podcast. I've done it for so long. And, and they do the thing that I dread in my professional life, which is pull their phone out and go help me find it. And I'm like, oh. all right, no. go to iTunes and... And enter in painkiller already, you know, because I don't want to show them the the YouTube version. Painkiller, you know, like, all like the an antics. aspirin. Yeah, like I, I, and so he took it out and he searched it up and he found painkiller already on iTunes. And apparently, there are a few new reviews that people have left there. And one of them says, and he was reading it out loud. He's like, "Uh, I'm so thankful to Woody and Kyle that despite Taylor's developmental disorders, they're willing to employ him on the show. 
he's reading this. There's still other people in the room who I work with. Like, I, like not like every day, but people I have connections. I email every so often, like that kind of thing. And he's like, why are they saying, why are they saying that? Like you're on the show with them. Right. And I'm like, yeah, it was a, a meme cropped up that I'm mentally retarded. <laughs> and so that explains that. And I was expecting him to like, not get it entirely. He busted a gut. <laughs> about the prospect of a bunch of people on the internet saying that I was mentally retarded and writing it into iTunes reviews. So thanks, guys. Thanks for that. More reviews like that needed. Pump up our iTunes rating. It oh, always Jesus helps. Christ. So uh, so th thanks, fellas. <laughs> that could have gone one of two ways, and it went the good way. So oh, I, Yeah, whenever they're like, help me find it. And I'm like, no, my podcast isn't for good people like you. We <laughs> tell bad jokes about bad people and... No, bad jokes about good people sometimes. Yeah, yeah like, like solid people. Like I, my grandparents refuse to look for it. They don't know what it's called, they, and I love that about them. Yes. Grandma says, I, "I just don't. I know what the kind of. I, I can only assume the kind of things you're saying on there, and I don't want to hear my grandson saying those things." And it's like, Grandma, I love you. Just continue to not know what the internet is. However, if your grandparents saw how you talked about them on the show, they would feel warm inside. It's they would, but they'd have to sift through a yeah. <laughs> hundred bogs of shit uh, to come across one of those. You gotta go knee deep in raccoon shit to get all the way to the part where Taylor is thankful <laughs> for their delicious meals and his grandfather's, you know, good times on the farm and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. you gotta go all yeah, kind of talk easy. about brothers and... <laughs> I got a thing. <laughs> oh, something freaky happened to me the other day. I was, uh, it was like... I don't know, maybe like 8 a.m. or something a week, week and a half ago. And we were waking up on the weekend, my girlfriend and I, and I had woken up first. And I like got up, like got a drink of water and laid back down and like tried to get that like extra, you know, 40 minutes of sleep when you're still tired in the morning. And she was still totally conked out. And she sat up in like that creepy way that people like still dreaming do. Yeah. And she goes, so she goes, Taylor, Taylor. You're covered in blood. Oh, God. You're covered in blood. And then she laid back down and fell asleep. And I was like, what? So, so I, I woke her up later and was like, do you remember waking up and telling me I was covered in blood? And so where's she like, staying now? No, hmm. she's uh, <laughs> uh, in, the, in the basement. A manacle. <laughs> yeah. But she's like, Fuck. yeah, I, I just woke up and I looked over and I saw you and you were just covered in blood and blood was spurting out of your chest. And I was like, wow. And so you just went back to bed? Like, you saw that and then you just <laughs> went back to bed? You didn't even try to, like, help me? She's like, I don't know. I was, I was just trying to go back to bed. But so now I know if I am ever bleeding to death in the middle of the night, she's not going to fucking wake up. No, no. You better apply your own sutures. It's I should. Yeah, I, I have very vivid dreams, and I, I remember them uh, pretty accurately uh, almost almost all the time. And they'll be long, long, long narratives. And I've always wondered what the time um, dilation well, like is like. the right. real time elapse versus the dream? I've always wondered that, too. Yeah, I don't know if it's one-to-one -one or, or, or if dream time is condensed. Like if I'm experiencing an hour in my dream and five minutes of real-world time, I, I bet there's some sort, some sort of like, neurologist who could answer that question maybe by looking at brainwave patterns while you're asleep or something probably uh, they probably a, a recurring sort of nightmare i had when i was younger it was like a, it was the shortest dream much less nightmare i've ever had and it would like i'd get it like once every few months but it was it just started with me being late for school and my mom is already outside in the car you know in the driveway not in the garage anymore like, Taylor, come on, we're late, we're late, we gotta go. And I'm running out there with my backpack and my lunchbox, and I and like I hit the button to close the garage door, and I run to try and dive through the garage door, you know, like you have to do so you don't get the sensor and, and cause it to reopen. But I trip first, fall, and the garage door comes down and crushes my head and pops it like a grape, and I die. And that's the whole dream. Damn. It's like 30 seconds of, Taylor, you're late. Taylor, you're late. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to be late. Run out, trip, head crushed. And that's yeah. It. I was talking about you guys before the show that uh, I'd never talked about, and I've got plenty of stories from this job, but I'd never talked about this rental car company that I worked for, like right, right out of college. And because it turns out that when you graduate, this was like, so this was like seven years ago, 2013, when, this, when a lot of this happened, 2013, 14, mostly. And 
I, I worked at a rental car company and it doesn't really matter what company it is. It's the kind where you have to dress up like you're going to a, a you know, a bar mitzvah and really you, you just look like a retard renting cars in a suit, which sucks. And so, and it's the kind where you have to pick someone up. And so I started working at this company and one of the first things they do is they're like, and I'm right out of college. So I'm ready to be like, all right, I'm not going to make much money. I'm barely going to make any money. This is going to suck. I'm going to be working so much for this job and I'm barely going to be bringing home anything, but whatever, you got to start somewhere. And so I started working for this company. They sent me down to uh, their, their like main city where they train all the new people and they give you a roommate in these situations. And they pair you up with a random guy. I got, I was 22 at the time, I think, just turned 22. This guy was like 26, 27, Mormon, already had three kids. And there's an old adage. When I lived in Idaho, I, I learned a lot of Mormon adages. And one of them about Mormons is never go fishing with one Mormon because they'll drink all your beer. Always bring a second Mormon so that they won't drink in front of each other. And so I'm like, trying to get ready for my first job and training and stuff. And I'm like, man, you know, I have no perspective. I'm just worried about not getting something right. And so we get in there that night. I'm like ready to buckle down and study the little book and everything. I'm, I'm in the room and he comes in and he's like, Hey, you're Taylor, right? And I'm like, yeah, you must be uh, Andy. He's like, yeah, yeah. Real nice to meet you, man. Real nice to meet you. So where are you from? We have this little talk and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you want to do tonight? It's like, uh, so we're, we're on a work thing. It was my first ever work trip. And I was like, I, I assume you do work all the time on these. I'm trying to learn so I don't look like a fool tomorrow. And he's like, nah, I'm, I'm sure we'll be fine. Listen, you want to like go to a bar or something? And I was like, not not particularly. It's already like 9 p.m. And he's like, how about we do, there's a liquor store across the street. Let's go to the liquor store and we'll get a couple things. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll have a few beers tonight. And so I go over to the liquor store with him. I grab a six pack and I'm just waiting at the front for like five, six minutes, which is a long time to wait standing there with a guy you don't know. And eventually I'm like, where the fuck is this motherfucker? And I start walking around and he is like picking up every bottle of liquor, like fascinated with it. Like, oh my God, like the forbidden fruit for this guy. He loads up a mini cart with, we're there for four nights <laughs> and he has enough booze for us to go on a three week bender. <laughs> Both. He has no <laughs> Just he loads it up and he's coming to the front, all fucking smiles. This guy, he's like, "You got all your stuff?" I'm like, "Got like one six pack of Bud Light." He's like, "All right." We so we check everything out, go back to the room. I start like drinking a beer while I'm doing everything. I turn around after maybe 15, 20 minutes. He's drank half a bottle of vodka by himself, already blackout drunk, and this guy stayed blackout drunk for the next four days he was showing up to like the work things drunk he was out of fucking control it would we would finish something up he turns out mormons get degenerate as shit once they get a little liquor in them maybe that, that's a rule there was one night he was begging me he's like come on man it's our last night here come on let's go to the hot tub at the hotel and i'm like okay let's, <laughs> let's go to the hot tub he brings the free glass thing you use to rinse your mouth out next to the sink and a bottle of Jack Daniels that he sets next to the hot tub. And we're sitting there with like two other normal people. And I like have, I don't even think I brought a beer because it wasn't allowed. And he gets wasted here. And he spends the entire last night and the second to last night vomiting and keeping me awake until like four in the morning. And it was over and over. And at the end of it, he's like, talking to me like we experienced a hangover two style adventure <laughs> it's like man crazy times right and it's like i haven't been drunk the whole time we've been here i've had like three beers at a time and he's like nah dude dude we got we did crazy stuff anyway dude see you later bro uh reheard from him because he worked in a different state different area uh he had to go to rehab for alcoholism, which apparently started on that little trip. He and I had. <laughs> so I got to watch the beginning of a flower blossom of addiction. <laughs> and I actually encouraged it because I thought he'd be able to handle it. So yeah, that guy did it. Uh, another thing about rental car places, do not buy the insurance if you have your own insurance. They're going to try and scare you because they tell the salespeople to scare the shit out of you. And what I discovered working out in Idaho with this, where there's a lot of Hispanic people who like the 
first generation don't speak English. And so they have their kids talk to you. The only people who buy insurance are people who don't need it. And the only people who don't buy insurance are people who do need it. Where like, I can't count the number of times I'd be like at a fucking airport location. And some person would come up like uh, some Mexican lady and then her very young, like seven year old kid. And I'd be like, Hey, I can help you, ma'am. And then the kid would have to say like, we want a car. I'd be like, that's great. Uh, can you tell your mom that I need her license and her, her credit card? And she hands me a license and a very dented debit card. And I have to be like, no, this is a, it's a, 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 deb, a debit. It's a debit card. You need a credit card. She's like, no, it's credit. I use a credit card. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you can, you can hit credit when you're buying a Diet Coke at a 7-Eleven. But when you're renting a $75,000 Yukon, you can't, you can't run it as, as that. You, you have $75 in your account. And like I, the number of times, I didn't try and sell like rich people any insurance. Like I was the fastest at writing the tickets because I'd be like, you got insurance, brother? you would be like, yeah. It's like, you're fucking perfect. You're fucking good, dude. Should I buy the insurance? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> get out of here. I don't get commission for this. Why the fuck would I rip you off? But then when there would be like a Hispanic woman who comes up, I'm like, man, please. If you wreck this, Javier, can you tell your mom what I'm saying right now? <laughs> if, if you wreck the Yukon, that's an $80,000 car. Ocho thousand car. <laughs> that's not. <laughs> yeah, Ocho thousand car. So if you wreck this car, you have to pay for the whole thing. The whole car, Javier, Javier, you're obviously you're looking at the vending machines, Javier, Javier, <laughs> the whole car, see, see, yeah, whole car. It's like, so if you pay $20 extra a day, if you wreck it, you don't pay anything. But if you wreck it, your life and your children's lives are ruined. Just, just pony up and do it. They would never buy the insurance. And it felt like 10% of the time they'd come back and get absolutely fucked. The people who would buy it were like rich white yuppies who already had fantastic AAA or something and would just drop $20 for no reason a day on it. So never buy that shit. There was so much tomfoolery and nonsense. Always check your contracts from those people because they will sneak shit in in order to get sales. Like they will tell you. I, I There was one skeevy motherfucker that I worked with that was the worst about this. The forestry registry came in out of uh, Idaho where I was. Apparently that's where the biggest conglomerate of these firefighters come from. And then they all moved from there down to fight the wildfires in California. And they had set contracts. But because we worked on a DOS system, a DOS prompt system, we could manipulate the contracts. And so there was this one bitch who, Amy, if you're out there, I hope life is going terrible for you. I hope it sucks. I hope you got divorced after you left us. And so, because what she did is they have like sales goals. And if you hit a certain thing, they incentivize us by like, you can just go home. You can go home if you want to do that. This bitch would take $20,000 in sales and apply it to a forest registry contract. And those guys don't give a shit. They just, they'll sign whatever. And so then if I'm returning a car on the return line and it pulls up, that what was supposed to be a $1,200 rental for two weeks to the forest registry is actually a $35,000 fee. Do you know how upset a group of dirty firefighters get when you tell them that they owe $35,000 for that? They get so upset. And then I have to call like the fire commissioner of it and tell him, I'm so sorry, I got to refund $35,000, the cost of a nice fucking Optima that they already paid us. And then I get yelled at. That shit was the fucking worst. That job sucked. <laughs> Another thing they would fucking do is I worked at the airport many times going all the way to 2 a.m. And you'd be there with the manager and you would run out of cars, just out. And I would have 70 reservations at 1 a.m. by myself, standing at the counter with my little fucking tie like a retard. And I would just <laughs> hordes of people coming down the escalator to come to the rental place. And I'm just like trying to amp myself up. Like it's game seven. Like, whoo, all right. All right. You're going to get yelled at by at least 75 of those people. It's okay. It's okay. Then they all like get in line. 75 out of 70, <laughs> 75 out of 77. They're going to yell at me. Okay. Some and of them have wives. Some of them have wives there. None of them though. Cause they're getting in. They get in at two in the morning. Most of them off of planes that were so delayed. Mm -hmm. They just want their, and they just want to go home. And they have and a they reservation, but you didn't reserve they one. They have a reservation. And every time, 15 minutes before that plane lands, the manager would go, well, it seems like he got a good handle of things, Taylor. I'm out. And they would leave. <laughs> just be me there. 
and they would come in and you talk to the first guy in line and he's like slaps his fucking credit card and license on the table not pleased boom reservation thompson we're out of we're out of cars mr thompson what I have a reservation. The best you could hope for in that situation is that the guy would say the Seinfeld line and I would go, <laughs> but like that, that was the best you could hope. Usually you would get screamed at, berated. They'd ask for your name. They'd like call and complain. I'd have to try and be like, you know, the reason they did this is because they're trying. I, by the end of my tenure at this company, I was like totally like uh, Stockholm syndrome with the shitty customers. I'd be like, <laughs> we're all in this together, guys. We're all in this. I'm so sorry. I hate this as much as you do. I make $30,000 a year to get screamed at. I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm not happy at all. And just doing that. <laughs> you want to rent my car? I could use the cash. <laughs> what you get to do, you know what you get to do then is I have to like lean over and talk to the Hertz guy and be like, Tom, please, please, can you get some of these people going? He's like, Taylor, I'm so sorry, dude. We got like two cars and I got to save them. And so I would have to stand there until like 4 30 in the morning with every one of these people calling cab companies to take them where they need to go, then paying for it over the phone with the corporate card. And then after one of the companies runs out of cabs, I have to find a new cab company for all these people. It was the fucking worst job. It, <laughs> it yelled at constantly. The I would only be so mad. Of, it was awful. The only good part of that job is that if somebody came in hot and like you could even whiff just the slightest of alcohol, you could shut it down. Nope, not renting to you. you. You smell like whiskey. You smell like, and it was only a couple times that a person would come in like stumbling drunk and yell at you because you wouldn't rent them the, the car they wanted. Also, there's a fundamental misunderstanding about how reservations work. You do not reserve the car. You're not reserving anything. That's how shows. reservations work though. No, everywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that rent car companies, they shouldn't call it a reservation. They should call it a consideration. They should call well, it a prepayment because that's what it is. They're just, they're just you're just signing. Woody up. and I showed up at a hotel once, and they'd given our reservation away. Oh yeah, and I think we said, "I don't think you know how a reservation works." <laughs> yeah, I think we did. <laughs> Oh, our reservation works. Do you know how many times I wanted to leap over that counter and strangle someone to death for saying that Seinfeld line for the hundredth time that day? And it was infuriating because the, the fucking Why didn't manager, you put a sign up that said all out of cars? We would, but there's still 80 reservations for the top of the hour. And they still think that when they hop off the plane, they're getting it. Yeah. If like, there was no more cars, but I had a reservation, I would think... You only have the reserved cars left. I'm sure you have the vocabulary to make a sign that explains that. These people are not wanting to read. <laughs> yeah, but you if you could just peel off 20% of them, you know? I think I'd still need to hear it. I think I'd still be like, well, wait, I have a reservation. Because I, I know how reservations were supposed to work. Yeah, there was. There I was make a sign. All reservations, all reservations are null and void. We are out of cars. Zero with the word zero cars. Now, are you out of cars or are you out of clean cars? What if I have low standards? If so, usually the way it works is like those late night ones. There's no car preps there, and so you're literally out. But what how it is sometimes if it's like 5 p.m. and someone shows up and they have, have a reservation, it's like I need a minivan. I have to like phone over to the, the car preps who are the most degenerate group of, of no good nicks on earth. But, you leave anything in your rental car, that shit's getting stolen by one of the ex cons that work in the car cleaning. <laughs> I would get asked twice I knew a that. day. They were gifts all along. <laughs> twice a day, I would have to go down there with those, those animals and be like, did you guys find an iPad? And they'd be like, nope. <laughs> I'm like, at me. And I'd be like, you motherfuckers, can you please give me the iPad? And they're like, what iPad? And I'm like, I, I don't, I don't get paid enough to deal with this. And so I just go back <laughs> and say, I don't, I don't have that. We just had, if somebody lost a Garmin or something, we just had a bucket of them. Someone could have walked up and been like, Hey, I lost a hundred Garmins. I'd be like, just, fucking <laughs> take, them. just, just take them. I don't give a shit. A so, Garmin, the GPS, like aren't we're yeah, those? GPS or something like that. Okay. This was like, seven years ago and so people were still using some of those okay and uh yeah i'm trying to think of other shit that was just the fucking worst oh we had uh 
I had a guy, I got in like a 30 minute argument with a guy that he was smoking in the car and he was saying that you, there's no evidence of that. You, I know my rights. There's no evidence that I was smoking in this car. And so I did what they t- teach you to do, which is like open up the back rear uh, front door. Look at the bottom. There's a pile of ash there. That's how you know they smoked. Didn't have to do that, though, because there were dozens of cigarette burns in the seat in the upholstery. Wow. It was a Kia Soul, and it looked like it had been to Vietnam and back. He put out his cigarettes on the upholstery? Dozens of times. Just just speckled shotgun looking thing. There was no evidence. I, I have it. I, I'll have to send you guys the picture. I guarantee if I go back to like 2013, I have that shit on my phone because I took, you'd find weird shit in people's cars. You'd find dildos, sex toys. We found a costume once. Where Those you are dress- gifts for the cleaners, Taylor. And I'm uh, surprised you're less appreciative. <laughs> one, one guy we found, he called back to ask. I'll send this too. Uh, it's a giant costume that you wear over your whole body and it has an S on it and it makes you look like a sperm. <laughs> <laughs> costume and so this guy had to call at one point and he was like yeah i left a costume in the back of the car like, what kind of costume man he's like it's a sperm costume <laughs> you know the I costume had- taylor i know i had i'll send you that picture too at the time i just wanted to hear him say it i had the sperm costume right in the office it was making me laugh so hard and uh yeah the Place yeah, the- I'm actually wearing it right now. This thing's pretty kick ass. <laughs> pretty cool. No, I, I didn't put it on. It smelled weird. And uh, yeah, the only place in the air probably it was a little bleachy. But the only place worse in the airport that I worked was at an insurance replacement branch. So you know how most times if you're renting a car out of town, you pop by a Hertz Enterprise, whatever, you go in. It's just a normal what used to be a bank usually, and it's like, hey, give me uh, whatever the hell, and they go here you go, and they take it. An insurance replacement branch is when you get in an accident and it's at a body shop and they need to drive their shitty car, have it towed there, and then they get a horrible replacement car from you. And none of these people know, for the most part, that their insurance doesn't pay for rental cars. You have to opt into that in a lot of situations. And so they'll show up furious, like not even the chance to put them in a good mood. So you're like sitting there in the middle of a warehouse, like, how's it going, Mr. Jefferson? And he's like, well, I totaled my new car. How's your day going? And it's like, well, I regret to inform you, your insurance will not be covering the rental. How do you prefer to pay? Hmm. It's like, oh, no, I'm not fucking paying. I'm not, you call my insurance. And then you, they yell at you. They scream at you. They call you incompetent. They say, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Shut the fuck up. You're a fucking loser. Like they're mean as shit once they're, in their zone of being pissed. One guy, it was in a bay, uh, was so, I guess, not paying attention that there's a car in the front of the bay talking to the insurance person. At the entrance to the bay is where the rental place is, where they get you set up. There was a car pulled up to the insurance thing. This, Thank God no one was standing in the way. This guy must have came in into the bay going 22 miles an hour, and he just slams into the back of this other car that's already there for repairs and there's just fucking glass and shit all over the place. And then he gets out and yells at the lady who had that car there as if she was wrong. And he's like, it, these people are degenerates. They are the fucking worst a lot of the time. And then other times you'll come across the sweetest people in the world. My first day on that job where I was working there, they tell me, Taylor, you don't know what the fuck you're doing, how to write contracts yet. Go pick up this lady. She's at this apartment complex. You don't know where it is. And so I had to look it up on my phone. I, I get over there. And there's like, must have I don't know what the hell was going on, but there were like a, a bunch of cars on the curb with people in it. And so I pull up my car there and I don't know where to go because it's an apartment complex where it's just like stairs come down. And I just, I get, I just wait. I didn't know what to do. I didn't ever number anything. I just wait. And then I'm playing on my phone and I'm startled because the door, my rear side passenger door opens and this woman just starts going, oh, thank God you're here. My goodness. I, I got to strap my kid in the back. Do you mind not do that real quick? She starts strapping her kid in. I say I haven't said anything at this time. She gets the kid strapped in. And she goes, I done. I left my wallet in there. Give me one second. Closes the door. I didn't say anything. I haven't said anything so far. I'm now in the car alone with, I think, in a four to five of her year old, child, the four to five year old child alone. And like, that is the worst parenting I've ever seen. Cause <laughs> I was not the only guy sitting there. There were five or six people sitting on that curb in a car. I don't know why, but for all she knew, she walked up to a random car, buckled her kid in and left because I gave no affirmative acknowledgement of it. It was my first time. I was a little nervous. And so that was, that was weird. 
Uh, yeah, that job fucking sucked. I got to think of, of funnier stories for it. Right now, I'm just kind of ranting about how what much made you I remember. It? I was I was desperate for money. I was just out of college. I didn't have hardly anything. Like I just I needed a fucking job, and they were the first one that called me back. Went in, interviewed, got it done, and I was like, that, that's that's what I got to do now. I got to make money. Yeah, rental car companies hire a lot of people fresh out of college. Every major, and they all leave within two years. Yep. The turnover time in those companies is the worst because you get paid shit and they work you. They tell you when you're getting the job. So you're prepared to work 48, 50 hours a week. And you're like, yeah, that, that doesn't sound hard. I don't think I worked 50 hours a week in the entire like two years I was there. It was like always 60, 70, so much time. And they would, you've never felt like as much of a fucking goober as when you show up to your new job wearing nice clothes and the first thing they tell you to do, nice ass new patent leather shoes, and the first thing they tell you to do is to go wash a car in a bay with an indented part that goes to a drain. And so day one, you've got soap that's ruined your shoes in the bottom of your pants. And you're sitting there in the heat of the summer, scrubbing a Honda Odyssey in the middle of a damp bay in a suit like an <laughs> asshole. I would quit. I would quit on day one. I had a friend. He wasn't at my high school. He was a kid I knew through hockey at a different school in the area. But it was like a year and a half after we graduated that he got in trouble for uh, he had one of those, you know, those cars that you can buy like a cop car. That's just yeah. an old cop car. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. still have that like spotlight on the front. <laughs> And so every time they drive around you, you're like, oh, shit, oh, shit. And then someone drives by and you're like, well, fuck you, man. That's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> and he had one of those cars. And he bought on the internet, or I don't even know where he got it. It had to be like a pawn shop. One of those, like, you know those old cop movies where it's like, turn them on, boys. And they, like, put that thing on the top. <laughs> and it's like one of those circles. Uh, there's just one light. And he got in trouble for it. He, he, pull, he was just pulling people over, <laughs> pretending to be a cop. And he, and he wasn't, like getting out and being like, give me your papers and everything. Cause he was just like, they'd know like you're not a cop. So we just pull him up, sit there for a couple minutes, freaking him out and then just leave. And he got in trouble for that. Uh, Cause eventually someone told me that he pulled over an undercover cop, but that seems like it's so far fetched. That can't be true. So I don't know how he eventually got caught, but that, uh, yeah, that's a serious crime to be driving around <laughs> pretending to be a cop, pulling people over. I would never um, do that. I'd heard of people doing that, and inevitably you hear the same thing. Oh, then he pulled over a cop. <laughs> yeah, that's how it yeah. always ends. And I'm like, I'm not testing my luck at this. This is like the worst game of of blackjack ever. Like, I'm going to jail at the end of this uh, this night. And the fun of it, like, where is it even? I guess if you went out and got a police uniform and a ticket book, and you just went and really like played play like you were a super trooper and fucked with people, go you know, talking about chicken fucker and. Uh, and like uh, and having a good time, maybe it's funny, but it, even then, it's not worth the risk. It's a serious crime, and it's a big deal. But I feel like it's hard to measure, and I wouldn't know how to quantify this in law. But how serious it is is almost dependent on what's in the guy's heart, right? If you're abusing public trust in an effort to get girls to like blow you to get out of tickets, that's a really big deal. But your friend sounds like he just had an odd sense of humor and was doing it for yucks. Yeah. And there was never any chance of, you know, like serious abuse of power other than a 60 second delay. No, he wasn't a bad guy. He was just, uh, I haven't spoken to him in years. He mm -hmm. was just kind of an idiot, mm. which you have to be to, <laughs> to drive around and pull people over like that. Cause it's, just, there's no winning. Like best case scenario is you pull over like eight people in a row one Saturday night and you're like, man, what a hoot. And then you go home. <laughs> like exactly. worst case scenario is like you are, you go to jail and it's like, well, hope you weren't into guns or voting. Like, <laughs> that's not in the, in the tea leaves for you the rest of your life. Yeah. That's I think I'm so gonna... much of what you have to do with vet. Like I remember yeah. when I was in college, my brother was in high school. He had like, like younger high school, he had like a sandwich, a peanut butter sandwich with like cooked weed in it that he like, like made a firecracker with or something like where you put it in the oven with the weed on it. And <clears throat> this, this literally happened twice. And, uh, he just left a weed sandwich under his bed. And this is a long time ago. And we were just sitting around in the living room, me and my mom, my brothers, a couple people and Tobo, our little Bichon Frise comes out and he's acting normal at first, but then like oh, after a bit, he's like, 
like stumbling he's having trouble like moving correctly and then it gets to the point where he's just like almost comatose on there like tongue out eyes red as the devil's dick and (laughs) for for maybe an hour my youngest brother was like i don't know what's up with him i don't know what's wrong with him and then finally we got him to admit he's like i'm sorry there was a whole weed sandwich under my bed and we're like, how much did what he the fuck eat? Is a like, weed sandwich. It what was the, like, I, 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 I've never done this, but I guess you can put weed in like something with fat in it, like peanut butter, and then like high school kids would like put it in the, in the oven, oven or microwave it or something, and like yeah. it, it, it made it active enough to get you high. I don't, yep. I never did that. It seems disgusting, but he was like, seems like yeah, he ate weed. it. And we're like, how no, much? No, did no, no, gets you crazy, crazy high. Uh, it well, it got totally uh. fucked up, and he, uh this was the second time he had done this. And so he came clean more quickly. The first time he had accidentally drugged the dog with, with a firecracker sitting out, he like took him to the vet and then had to pay for it for the, the vet to go like, is he high? And he's like, yes. And he's like, then you take the dog home. Like, there's nothing we can do here. That'll be $700. <laughs> like, like that level of shit. But yeah, weed fucks up dogs just like it fucks up people, but way worse. I feel, I felt so bad for little the cute little Tobo that whole evening. Both of those evenings, because it's like for a dog, he's probably having the best time of his life. Though he's probably no. just sitting there in his head and just like listening <laughs> I, to like Bob Marley inside his brain, just like I hope oh, so. I think, I think he was he's probably like the dream. horrified, <laughs> just like I've never experienced altered reality in any way. Like I, I felt yeah. so horrible for him. I, I knew this one there, kid in, in high school. Zone. I didn't know this about him until later, but like he would like try and get his dog drunk sometime. Oh, like he, and I remember once like up. we were at his house for a thing. It was probably like either like early college and like everyone was at his house. We we're all sitting around drinking and everything. And he was like wasted and like laughing, like, watch this. I'm going to give beer to Stevie or whatever. And like you like even among like drunk, wasted people, like unanimous response. Like, <laughs> what is no. wrong with you? Like, don't do that. You're going to dog. Wait, what kind of dog? It was like a lab, like a like a, a normal lab looking dog. Beer. Miller I don't. I. I don't he, know. He have Miller Lite. He <laughs> have probably one. something like that. I know, like, he he have one. It's not good for him. You shouldn't like that. It, it could, he could killed a raccoon last summer. The the dog can have a beer. All right. Come on. <laughs> He's a fucking killer. <laughs> big Let boy. This is the same guy that like after the party at his house once because his family had a ton of money. Like he took us out to breakfast in his car, and he was the guy that like he had all the garbage and we were all underage for all the glass bottles and we were driving on that road and like he just threw a trash bag full of glass bottles outside of his Nissan while driving into the other lane. And everyone was like, what? Everyone's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know, I I actually, (laughs) it's, it's like, yeah, this guy, uh, the most abhorrent. It's, 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 it's it's despicable. It's despicable behavior. A whole bag of like liquor bottles. Very shitty. Like, like, uh, like beer bottles, stuff that cracks. It's glass. Like, yeah, like it was fucked up. He did a lot uh, of stuff I, I like that, where in his mind, day. it was like, this shows I'm like a badass rebel. But to everyone yeah. around him, it was like, dude, you're unbelievably like just needlessly cruel. Like, what yeah. is wrong with you doing Pretty this rough. kind of thing? Like, do you not think about I, like the people's days you're ruined? Like, like, fuck you. Did you, so, Kyle, you talking about having that back up through the yard catastrophe reminded me. I, I bet probably like seven years ago, I told this on by the, the way, show. I didn't say a word. You didn't say a word. You were a good man. You were on honorable. Are they still together? I'm curious. Did White Boy? I believe they are. I certainly hope they are. Good for them. Good for them. She was uh, really nice. uh, Basically, I think I was probably like 13, 14 or so. And we were coming from the rink. My mom was driving me. And it was me and I think my younger brother and Joel Quinville's son who played on a team with my brother. Joel Quinville at the time was the head coach of the St. Louis Blues. And so big like guy in the ho- the hockey community in St. Louis, very like tight. And so like the, the professionals like Chris Pronger and Al McInnes and Joel Quenville and all these guys would be down at the rink and their kids would be playing there. And so like we knew them and the, the Kachucks and we were dropping, my mom was dropping in this Honda Odyssey. I remember we were dropping him off at Joel Quinville's house, head coach of the blues after a practice. And it was rainy. It was shitty out. It was wet. And he was the coach of a professional hockey team. And so it was a very, very, very nice yard, very Mm -hmm. nice house, beautiful yard and a very long straight driveway. And my mom pulls up into it 
and lets him out and he goes in he's like see you later you know like i'll see you see you next time and she starts backing out and i remember like his driveway was big enough she could have done a little whoop de doop and like come back out straight but she started backing up and a hundred yard driveway however long it was and i think i think we got it about eight feet backward before <laughs> I felt the car go and just in the yard. And mm-hmm. she is, my mom just forging ahead, just driving two wheels like tilted in this guy's yard. And I'm like, mom, mom, you're in Joel Quinville's yard. You're in the coach <laughs> oh of the blues God. yard. Get back oh on the God. on the driveway. And she's like, it's fine, Taylor. It's fine. And I'm like, it's not fine. It's not <laughs> fine. So it's not <laughs> all, it's not fine. And so like all the way back, the full length of the driveway, there is just no. a solid rut, a ditch now of destroyed like yard right next to their driveway. And my mom, like, it just didn't register with her at all how like shitty it was. And so we've, I'm just like, I'm mortified. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to have to talk to, you know, someone mm-hmm. else during practice and like deal with this. This is really embarrassing. This guy's a big hullabaloo in the hockey world. And then she just backed out. I looked in horror at like a, decimated yard and then she just drove away and then i got back i and my dad my dad was there and like i waited and my mom went to go do something else and i was like dad mom drove through joel quinville's yard and he was like what like (laughs) he was like what and i'm like she started backing up and then she was just in the yard and then she just went all the way through the yard and he was like oh my god i saw that look I choose of, like, to believe that's what led to the divorce. I, I would have went back. I think it was. Like, 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 <laughs> timing doesn't work out. But <laughs> yeah, he, my dad was He's so... I, I, could on that see, I could see in his eyes and face because he, like, he would golf with like Al McInnes and Joel Quinville and like these guys. And he was like, oh my God. Oh, uh, He's like, do, do they know it was you who dropped them off? <laughs> like, yes, yes, they know. He's like, oh my God. They probably just, were all like watching through the, the blinds as you did it. Like, oh no, she'll stop. Uh, oh oh god blast it honey isn't that isn't that the kentucky bluegrass you had flown in oh (laughs) my mom was driving like hamas was hidden (laughs) under the yard just just blasting through it (laughs) so your father was friends with quinville and mcginnis and prime yeah Yeah, like because they like we played hockey at the same club and so like a lot of these guys played golf together and like what helped is that my dad is a ridiculously good golfer, like absurdly mm. good. People will be like, oh, but I'm really good at golf. And then they play with my dad and he blows them out. He plays nonstop all the time. And so these guys, like when people retire from hockey, they start playing golf. And so they wanted someone good to play with them. And so they would invite him to come play. And that was that was neat. So I got to like hang around the blues. Why at is the it time. fun to have somebody good with you? When they're playing like triples or like a group of four or something, it's good to have someone who's really solid on there, I guess. I, I don't even know enough. Like they like in group play where like they're a group competing against other groups. I guess it was good. Oh, to have okay. one. I remember uh, Matthew and Brady Kachuk are both in the NHL right now. The, the sons of Keith Kachuk. And I remember I met Brady and Matthew Kachuk. They're both like seven they're like seven and nine years younger than me or something like that. Seven and eight years younger than me. And the, the Kachucks invited us to their box to watch a blues game when I was probably, you know, nine or no, I'm sorry, not nine, like 12. And mm-hmm. so these kids were like three, four. And I remember my dad, like giving me a talk, like the whole way up there. He was like, you behave. We are with <laughs> blues players and we're going to their box and you will behave. And I remember being like, I do behave. Like, I don't know what I'm going to be in trouble for, but like <laughs> I was on my best yeah. behavior. And like every so often I would just like, cause all the adults were talking behind me and I was sitting in those little chairs up a little closer to that mini glass that overlooks the ice. And then I would like get up every so often and go get a Coke because I wanted a soda. And like, that was my big, Oh my God, it's a box as many hot dogs and sodas as I, as I please. And so I was doing that whole time. And I had to end up getting multiple sodas. Cause I would go get a Coke. I would open it and then like drink some, put it next to me. And then it was either Matthew or Brady Kachuk, probably Matthew at the time was like four years old. He came over and he just kept knocking my soda over. Like this little kid, he just kept going. Whap! And I remember in my head being like, that's Keith Kachuk's kid. And dad said, to behave. <laughs> and so I just would like, you're like, good, pick hit, up. Little yeah. <laughs> good <laughs> hit little guy. And so I just pick up the soda and throw that one away and then open up another one. And then <laughs> he'd come over like 10 minutes later and bah! 
knock, knock my soda over again. Oh, got it's another just, one. Two points yeah. for you. <laughs> Matthew, little did I know he'd be an NHL. Hey, I'm superstar. Taylor, by the way. We should be friends for life. We should be <laughs> great friends. Yeah, I, I have, I'm thinking about it. I have a bunch of good like hockey stories knowing those guys. Eric Johnson was the first overall pick by the St. Louis Blues in 2006, I want to say. So I was 15. He was 18. And he was boarding with the McKinnises at Al McKinnis's house, and which is pretty common if you're like a young 18-year-old first-round draft pick, first overall especially, that you're going to go to the NHL right away, more likely than not. And so they'll board you with an existing NHL family with, with people on there so that you can kind of get acclimated. And I knew Al McKinnis's son at the time, and so he and I were playing shinny hockey in Al McKinnis's basement, which is like a little – where it's where – you know, those little tiny hockey necks, like yay big, made of plastic, and then mm-hmm, those little mm-hmm. plastic uh, sticks with the, the foam ball. And basically, you're on your shins, you're on your knees, and it's one-on-one, and you're trying to play hockey versus each it's, other. It's so much fun. Shinny is great. And hmm. me and uh, Al's son were playing, and because I'm a goalie, it gives me a tremendous advantage in this game because second nature, I'm always keeping myself square to the net. Whereas someone who plays forward or defense isn't going to be doing that as much. They're going to leave open scoring opportunities. And so I beat Al McKinnis' son. And then I uh, look over and Eric Johnson, first overall draft pick, comes down in the basement. He's like, what are you guys doing? Uh, At this time, Al McKinnis' son is like four years, one year younger than me. I'm three years younger than Eric Johnson. And he's like, I want to play. And he's like an 18-year-old first-round draft pick (laughs) in the NHL. And so he's unbelievably competitive, (laughs) unbelievably competitive. And I won. Oh, yeah. I beat Eric Johnson. Johnson, shout out. Shout out you, Mm -hmm. Eric Johnson. Has a a good career. Loser. He, Eric loser. Johnson, loser. I, you're I, lucky we're giving you this attention. Oh, yeah, we're la- you're welcome, Eric. And so <laughs> we were playing, and like at first it started off where he wasn't going that hard on me, and then he realized like, oh, this kid's like, and I'm also like a pretty big 15 year old. And so by the end of the game, he and I are both sweaty, and he's like, when I have possession of the puck, he's like leaning on me like hard, trying to move me, and I'm mm-hmm. like bounce trying to bounce it off the wall to get it into the into the net. And I won, and he got like, like he kind of got up like with a, a little bit of a huff, of, ah, fuck, like mm-hmm. I got, like mad about it. And I remember for a long time, I'm 32 now. And I still remember that and being like, hell yeah. Yeah. The, the king of shit. Zero if you wanted. Yeah, I could have. <laughs> and by that, doing a little college football math, I should have been the first overall draft uh-huh. pick <laughs> in yeah. the NHL. I mean, I, I bet if some of those scouts had seen that that shinny footage, they may have, may have had some other ideas. They would have. I kicked ass at shinny. So Eric Johnson, mm-hmm. invite open. You want a rematch anytime, any place. <laughs> oh, I've got I've made a hundred million dollars in one Stanley Cups. Who cares, brother? Mm-hmm. I, Dude, I took you down in Al McKinnis' basement, the basement. In, two, in 2005. <laughs> basement champion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Did you guys know any like professional athletes growing up or like? No. Can, no. My <laughs> father knew um, <laughs> Pat Croce. <laughs> I, I forget where you're from. <laughs> you guys know any uh, celebrities or anything as a child? You know, hang out with them and stuff, befriend them? No. It's just because we're in the same, the same circles. There was this one guy who I didn't even know very well. He wasn't a good buddy of mine. This is only a few, this is maybe three, four years ago that this happened. And it was a dude that I didn't know at all. But one of my really good buddies that I trust a lot was like, hey, I met this guy. This is when I lived in the city. He's like, and he needs help moving. And you were going to come by my place anyway. And he lives in the same complex as me. And we were going to barbecue. Can we? Can you just help him move some stuff real quick? And I was like, oh, I guess I can. And so this guy, I don't know what fucking all. Like it immediately becomes like the moving nightmare where I get conscripted into helping my buddy move that, and I know my buddy's going to help because he's like a big MMA guy, pretty, pretty jacked. And then his friend is just this pudgy dude who's kind of small, not very useful. And he's just like directing us rudely on how to maneuver things, how to carry things. And it's like the whole time I was thinking like this, I wanted to be like, you met me eight minutes ago and I'm carrying your couch. Go fuck yourself. Like, <laughs> what is wrong with you? I, I, I wanted to just drop it, but I, I forged ahead for my buddy because I told him I would do it. And. He was like, this fucking guy we were helping was a cunt, an absolute cunt the whole time. Rude afterward, didn't even do anything like, like I didn't expect to get paid, but it usually it's like, Hey, I'll grab, uh, I'll grab some hot dogs and brats for the the grill we're going to have. I'll grab some beer. I'll grab whatever it is. Right. Just to be curious. Didn't do any of that. Show some we ended appreciation. up sharing with him for more. Yeah. It was just, it was just showing appreciation, just being genuine. And that guy 
after that ended up being pretty nice for a while, kind of similar to your story where it was like, oh, he's kind of nice. He's kind of nice. And then at one point, I think it was Halloween like three years ago. And he kept telling me, he's like, hey, we're going to go to this bar. I know everybody there. I'm the only one that can get us in. And I was like, I don't really care if we go to that bar or not, man. Like we can, we're bigger people. Not everybody wants to go. He, we got to go there. They're going to give us special treatment. Whatever. It's close. We walk. We go there. And immediately he starts like joking around with the bouncer being like, no, everybody here is cool. You know, you don't have to kick those guys out. They're all with me, you know, but you know, they're not with me. You can kick them out. Ha -ha." And it was like, all right, this is, this is bizarre. And go up there immediately. It's the kind of bar I don't like at all, which is loud. Can't talk, can't have a conversation. It was Halloween, which helps make it so you can't really have a conversation in any bar. And so I go up there we, we start chatting. I'm talking totally away from him at this point. I haven't talked to him for half an hour and he must've got fucking hammered and I was getting drunk too, but he came up to me and like, did that. Like his head was about here on my nose and I'm a, a much larger man than him. And he just like came up to me and was like, you talking shit about me. Are you talking shit about me here? I got you in. And I was like, dude, Derek, I haven't talked to you in half an hour. I'm, I'm talking to my girlfriend and, and, and my buddy that you introduced One, us like no two what if i was yeah that's what it was more of like uh what are you what are you talking did someone tell you i was talking shit and he's like no you're fucking out of here man you're fucking out and i'm like i'm out of here what are you talking about like is this baseball bitch like i'm out of here and <laughs> we're getting a little bit of an argument there in the middle and this is on the outside area it wasn't on the inside so people would actually hear this a little bit and he's like no you're out of here i'm going to get my bouncer friend and i was like Let's go get your bouncer friend because I was going to call his bluff that he didn't know. He's not going to pull rank with these bouncers who just want to get through the Halloween shift. They just want to get through the Halloween shift without dealing with a fight or anything. You think they give a fuck about this goddamn loser? And so we go over there and he's like, hey, Eric, this guy's causing problems out there. You got to throw him out. And the guy like gave me eyes of like, what? (laughs) What? 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 Uh, and he's like, I, I don't know, Derek. He clearly knew the guy's name. He's like, Derek, I, I haven't seen him do anything. Like, it doesn't doesn't seem like he's doing anything. He's like, no, dude, he's causing problems out there. You got to throw him out. And in the middle of the argument, I was like, I'm, I'm just going to go, dude. I'm just going to leave. I'm going to grab my girlfriend. We're going to leave. I live real close. Everybody here likes me more than you. We're going to go party at my house. You can't come. And we all, I go back. I grab That's my friend. That's a power house. move. I'm loving this so far. I'm more likable than him. I was funny and he wasn't. And we, I grabbed. <laughs> My girlfriend, she tells everybody, oh, okay, we'll meet you over there in like 20 minutes, whatever. We start going back. And as I'm passing the same guy to leave, the same bouncer and everything, that guy's, uh, Derek is still there. And he tries to do the like, bro, we got off on the wrong foot kind of thing. Like, it it didn't even seem like he, at that point, I was 100% positive he did not like me at all. And it was some weird little thing for him to regain something in front of his bouncer friend. I don't really, I don't get what it was, but I didn't stop to talk to him. I just kind of left. But uh, yeah, that guy's a fucking loser. Uh, he, I remember he would try to lie to me about finances. He was in medical school and he was like, yeah, I, I, uh, I got a residency out in, uh, Salt Lake city. Guess what they're paying me? I'm like, I don't know, man. He's like five fifty, And I was like, <laughs> an hour. Can we go back? I want to redo. Uh, I need to rewind three and a half years to get back to that moment. <laughs> I, was just, I know like, how to cut someone down. <laughs> I'm also that. good at that. I just, I just kind of <laughs> laughed it off. Like, oh, wow, really? That's good for you. Like, knowing, like, you have no respect for my intelligence if you're going to lie that brazenly. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, he was a piece of shit. I hope life's going poorly for you, dude. For those of you who lie about <laughs> things like that, we. Anyone who knows anything, just we immediately know you're lying. We immediately know you're lying. Yes. Like as soon as you said that, like, no, he's not. No, he's five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I remember that's exactly if you, if you are a fucking brain surgeon with your own practice, like your own practice, like like mm-hmm. it, it's your name's on the fucking sign outside. Maybe. Yeah. A maybe lot of, a lot of no. Specialists can make that much. Like cardiac surgeons can make five fifty. But if you're like, if you're the cardiac surgeon at the ER, you're not making five fifty. No. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I did. No. I, mean, I did. You're making two for doctors. Yeah. And you're making high twos or something. You're not probably. making five fifty. Five fifty yeah. is an enormous amount of money for. Look. I, Some of the people operating at the hospitals have their own firm, right? You know, their, their own practice, like. So it, but yeah, anyway, but he, that's not what this guy's situation was. He was starting. No, he's a resident. He's saying yeah. he's a resident. 
He doesn't even have like, get out of here. he's gonna show up first day and then like the real doctors are gonna show him what's what. Like they're they're giving that guy how much are the nurses making at this place? <laughs> 350. 50. <laughs> <laughs> Outrageous claim. What a piece like, of shit. It, it would no, be like I, someone like being like, Yeah, I work at uh first day going into Long John Silvers. No, I'm pulling down a cool one tent. And it's like what <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> no, what do you have?